beat Notre Dame. And here come the Irish. as they make their entrance onto the field and hot on their heels the Spartans of Michigan State. Special moment for a couple of their players. Kirk Cousins, their quarterback, and Greg Jones, number 53, the linebacker. He said when he came here as a freshman two years ago, he stopped and took in the surroundings of Notre Dame State and the upperclassmen had to tell him, no, come on, get going. You're here to play a game. Well, he won't stop today. He's one of the captains leading the Spartans out onto the field and their quarterback who grew up in the Chicago area said coming out of that tunnel will be living a dream for me. So a matchup of two teams one and one on the season after a heartbreaking losses a week ago game three of this 2009 stadium in Notre Dame Stadium 2009 season uh, Tom Hammond and Pat Hayden here and Boy, it was a painful loss for both teams last week. Uh, one bright spot for the Irish, though, was the passing of Jimmy Clausen, who continues to play outstanding football. And despite a couple of uncharacteristic drops by Golden Tate, no question that Tate and uh, Michael Floyd are two of the best receivers in all of college football. Well, you're right. I mean, a lot of teams have a good receiver, but the Irish are blessed by having really two outstanding guys on the outside of Michael Floyd and Golden Tate. Michael Floyd injured last week in that late in the game against Michigan, required 15 stitches in his right knee. He he will play today 100 you know, percent watching him. It's like watching a basketball player. Really, you know, they throw the ball up and he out jumps guys out rebounds them leads the nation in yards per catch at 29 per catch. You see the bandage on his knee and on the other side Golden Tate a really different kind of receiver more of a run after the catch kind of guy. Golden Tate is a guy that has those strong hands you know turns into a running back and I think before the year is out is really going to make a mark on special teams particularly on punt returns. So Tom you know I think in college football it's kind of easier to take away one receiver. It's really hard for a defensive coordinator to take away two guys. Well, Michigan State entered the season with sort of a two quarterback system, but here in game three, it looks like Kirk Cousins has established himself as a clear number one. Well, you're right. We're going to see a little bit of Keith Nickel to back up, but Kirk Cousins seized the opportunity and has played very well in the first two games. You know, he's smart, he's efficient, and, you know, he really does things well. 66% completion rate, thrown four touchdowns, has not turned the ball over. Now, Michigan. Michigan State wants to have that identity of a tough running football team. Right. They don't have that uh, yet as they did last year. And so Kirk Cousins is going to have to lift this offense on his back and lead them until they establish that identity. All right, it's Notre Dame and Michigan State, a rivalry that dates to 1897 and has great meaning for both teams. Michigan State and Notre Dame is uh, a great rivalry. It's one of the, the toughest games we'll play all year. We're going to have to buckle up our chin straps and be ready to play. I think this is uh, one of our biggest rivalries on the schedule. We've had the honor to say we've gone down there six straight times and beat uh, the Irish on the field. I think that just adds to the rivalry. You know, Michigan State Notre Dame rivalry is something special. And for the past two years, we've lost to Michigan State, and we have a bitter taste in our mouth. And you know, we just want to come out, play a real hard-nosed game, and come out with a victory. It's got the distance, and it is. Good! Yes! 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 Fires left side. Touchdown! With 11 seconds left, Michigan has the lead. Tough losses a week ago. The question today, who will be able to come back? Michigan State meets Notre Dame for the 73rd time. And there's no question that Michigan State has had the upper hand the last few meetings against the Irish. And for more on this rivalry, let's go down to Alex Flanagan. Thank you, Tom. Well, 
while Charlie Weiss determined not to let Michigan State beat Notre Dame for a seventh straight time here at Notre Dame Stadium. The one stat that we haven't mentioned is the one that Weiss shared with his team to really give some perspective to this losing streak. He told them that his son, whom the team all knows well, who is 16 years old, Charlie Jr., was born in 1993. Of course, the year, the last time that Notre Dame beat Michigan State here at Notre Dame Stadium. And Tom and Pat, Notre Dame with reason to believe that they can break the streak today. As Pat mentioned, Mark D'Antonio saying that his team is still searching for its offensive identity. All right, Alex, thank you very much. We'll uh, see how it all plays out today. Notre Dame won the toss, deferred to the second half, so Nick Tosh kicking off. And Tosh's kick is taken by Glenn Winston, and Winston breaks a couple of tackles and takes it all the way out to the 45. And uh, the freshman uh, kicker, Nick Tosh, has not been getting the ball very deep and not much hang time, and that was a pretty good example there. Good return of 34 yards where Kirk Cousins come out, comes out for the Spartans to get them underway. And he said to us this week, the first thing is don't beat ourselves. And he has really protected the football in the first two ball games. He has the top quarterback rating in the Big Ten, four touchdowns without an interception. Here's the first down play. From the 45, first play from scrimmage. And it's a handoff to Carlton Ray. And Ray tripped up as he comes to midfield. Harrison Smith with the tackle. As we take a look now at our starting lineups, brought to you by Adidas. And here is the Michigan State offensive line. They've juggled that uh, offensive line with Moss and Young getting the start on the right side. Ray is the top rusher and White the leading receiver for the Spartans. On second down, Cousins in the shotgun. On the slant, the ball is dropped. Hit him right on the numbers, and it was dropped by Mark Dell. And Mark Dell in the slot here, a guy that actually started two years ago as a freshman. Simple little slant pattern and a good throw by Cousins. Should have been caught. Kyle McCarthy, the uh, steady one at strong yeah. safety, making the uh, play, the breakup. So here's a big third down play on third down and five. Empty backfield, Cousins. Throws incomplete through the hands of B.J. Cunningham. So a couple of drops early by the Spartan receivers brings up a punting situation for Mark D'Antonio's team. Well, their, their punter has done a great job. The Spartan punter, Aaron Bates, has had seven punts this year. Five of them have been downed inside the 20. And, Tom, you know, it's a Michigan State team, Big Ten team, playing field position, old, old Big Ten football. Bates averaging uh, 49 yards a punt. And as you said, five inside the 20 and no touchbacks. Golden Tate awaits it at his 10 yard line. Under some pressure, Bates goes down to the ground, but the referee saying, get up, no flag. And Notre Dame will have it as Tate makes a fair catch at the 15 yard line. 35 yard punt with no return. You know, Aaron Bates, we talked about him as the punter and had a big season thus far. As his own man, yeah. actually, that knocked him down. Yeah, it wasn't Gant. So here's Jimmy Clawson now. He's been brilliant so far. 67% completions, seven touchdowns without an interception. Yeah, that, that's the amazing thing. No interceptions and seven touchdowns. I mean, you've got a two to one ratio, that's pretty good. Four wides here and on first down, empty backfield. Clawson in the shotgun. And the pass to the outside to Robbie Paris, who makes the catch. Gain of six on first down from Pawson to Paris is our Adidas starting lineups for the Irish offense. And that offensive line has opened up holes for the running game. They've not allowed a sack of Pawson this season so far. Allen comes off a career high, 139 yards at Michigan. Tate, Floyd, and Rudolph give Clawson plenty of quality targets. They were just, you know, they start off with a no huddle, too, Tom. And the first flag of the game. Defense, offside. 
Number 58, unabated across the line. The penalty results in the first down. So unabated across, across the line. Anderson with the penalty. Our official, as you saw, Dave Witbowitz uh, from the Big Ten, a Big Ten officiating crew today. And Charlie Weiss told us this week, you know, they have really started slowly against the Spartans the last couple of years. So he really wanted to juice it up here in this first couple of series. And as he said, let's throw the ball all over the arc. Five wides, empty backfield. First down by penalty as Clawson scrambles, finds Rudolph wide open. And the big man rambling down the sideline. Kyle Rudolph still. His feet pushed out of bounds finally after the big game by Marcus Hyde. He was all by himself. Yeah, and, but terrific vision by Jimmy Clausen, too, Tom. I mean, he was committed to scrambling there for a moment. He saw a flash out of his left eye, a blue jersey, a blur of blue, if you will. And there is 6'6 Kyle Rudolph. And this is the third game in a row that number nine, who's just there in the slot, comes up with a long play. I mean, a 6'6, 260 pounds, but he had a 72 yard callback last week, but good. A vision by Jimmy Claus and find it. It went for 52 yards. First down Irish at the Michigan State 21. The pass to Rudolph again. And Rudolph is inside the 15 yard line. Yeah, good block downfield by Robbie Paris. You know, with wide receivers blocked, two or three yard gains become eight or nine or 15 yard gains, and that's just what happened right there. Jeremy Ware makes the stop of Rudolph and catches two in a row. The 52 yarder was the longest of his career. That stood, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go with two tight ends now. Ragon and Rudolph and for the first time Armando Allen will line up in the backfield. He's in the Wildcat formation to take the direct snap. Fakes it. Allen keeps up the middle. Touchdown. This year, seven of them have gone for 75 yards or more. And this reminds me a little bit of a few years ago, Charlie Weiss's first year, that opening drive. He put a lot of heat on the defense immediately. And for the second time in three games, he scored on their opening drive. Nick Towns to attempt the extra point. He's seven for seven this season. And that one down the middle and good. So the Irish go 84 yards in five plays. The big play. Lawson's pass to Rudolph that goes for 52 yards. And then from the Wildcat formation, Armando Allen finishes it off. And the Irish up 7-0 on the Spartans. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Alex Flanagan, Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish score on their first possession. And so Nick Tausch has it teed up and ready to kick it off again. Didn't get a very good kick first time out, and the Spartans had good field position, but couldn't make anything of it. Well, they gave up a return for a touchdown last week against Michigan. Jimerson and Winston are the deep men for the Spartans. This is a much better kick with some hang time to the seven yard line to Winston. Glenn Winston with a seam. Bangs his way across the 30 to the 32 yard line for a return of 25 yards before he stopped by Ray Herring. Tom, let's go back and have a look at Kyle Rudolph on that 52 yard catch that he has. And he kind of he lined up here, right here in a slot. And you'll see Jimmy Clausen scramble. And, and Clausen early in this play is con committed to run. But then he sees that flash of blue out of his light, uh, left eye, out of his eye, that, that, that vision you talk about. And then 52 yards later, Kyle Rudolph can really motor for a big guy, you know? 260 pounds, 50 family and friends here to watch. <laughs> from Cincinnati, here's Kirk Cousins now playing from behind under center. Play action fake, and Cousins whips it to a wide open receiver. White, who makes the catch. Blair White gets 12 yards and a Spartan first down before he's covered by Darren Wall. Okay, Blair White is a heck of a receiver for Michigan State. And one of those great stories, Tom, you know, came as a walk on, worked harder than anybody, finally got a scholarship, started last year, really has became a star this year, you know, catching 16 balls and now a co-captain. Three time all academic Big Ten who graduated last May with a 3.88 grade point average in human biology. 
working on a second degree in human resources as the carry goes to Larry Caper. Caper gets a pretty nice run on first down of eight yards. And uh, Blair White uh, accepted to graduate school at Detroit Mercy and plans to enroll there next year. We'll check our Adidas starting lineups for the Notre Dame defense now. And expect the Irish to substitute more up yep. front today, hoping to do a better job of stopping the run. Brian Smith leads the linebackers in tackles, but Kyle McCarthy leads the Irish overall and also has a couple of interceptions. You remember they play two spread teams to begin. Now more traditional yep. offense they're facing as Glenn Winston gets the call. You know, it was amazing talking to John Tenuta, defensive coordinator for Notre Dame. He was saying, you know, we played 140 plays in our first two games. Only 14 of those plays were our base de defense. There's John Tenuta, uh, the really excellent defensive coordinator, likes to blitz you as soon as you come off the bus. <laughs> I mean, he'll bring linebackers and safeties. And, you know, it, it's just a pressure game with John Tenuta. Every offensive coordinator knows you're going to have to have a protection first against a Tenuta defense. First down, Spartans, two tight end formation here. Irish showing blitz. Quick toss to White. White goes one on one to the 40 yard line, and Darren Walls makes a sure tackle in the open field. Blair White, we, we mentioned, you know, you, you, you say sometimes a guy is uh, runs precision routes, and that's subterfuge that he's not very fast. Well, that's not the case with Blair White. You know, he's averaging 134 yards in catches per game. He, he can get deep, but he does run those precise routes as well. 17 catches this season. Last season he had 43 to lead the Spartans. High formation here. Caper the tailback. Nothing there. Well, that's a heck of a play by Darius Fleming. And stopping the run has Boy. been a problem for the Irish. Yeah, they've been gashed a couple of times. They have, you know, giving up 172 yards a game, but Darius Fleming, number 45, playing defensive end rather than an outside linebacker, inside stunt makes the play. But you're right, Tom, that was an area of emphasis for Tanuta this week for the Irish defense. Down and six for the Spartans. Cousins in the shotgun. Cunningham in motion. Good protection oh, by boy. the Spartans offensive line and a yeah. huge top catch by Blair White. I think that, that is a heck of a catch because he was really not open. And, and, and Kyle McCarthy dives in front of this. You know, the perfect distance. Well, that just a, a beautiful catch and, by Blair White. And Cousins put it where only his man yeah. could get it, huh? And we were talking to Kirk Cousins this week, and he said the thing about Blair White, if, it, if you say, hey, run a 12-yard route, you know it's going to be exactly at 12 yards. First down for the Spartans as they convert a third and long. Cousins retreats. Plenty of protection. Now it starts to break down, scrambling. And back to the line of scrimmage where Darius Fleming pounds him out of bounds. He had time, but the coverage downfield presented prevented him from getting the pass away. And today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. Hey, Tom, you mentioned Blair White being a pretty good student. How about Kirk Cousins? He's awfully good as well, pre-med student. We met with him up in East Lansing the, on Thursday, and they had what, just come from organic yeah. chemistry class? Ouch. <laughs> Your favorite, right? Hey, Kentucky. Second down and 12 for the Spartans. They lost a couple on that scramble. And a toss on the money again, this time to Mark Dell. Dell hangs on despite the hit from Robert Blanton. Yeah, I tell you, there's good coverage, but I tell you, Kirk Cousins has been accurate early in this game. Pinpoint passing yeah. from Cousins. And, but it's had to be, right? Because yeah. good, good, good coverage that time by Blanton. Kept it away from the defender just out in front of Dell. Dell got his first start as a freshman here a couple years ago. This is his first game this year because he's had an injured shoulder. Glenn Winston is the only running back here. First down play, Spartans with a nice drive going. Winston tried to cut back and stood up and slammed down by Ian Williams. Yeah, against a Michigan State team, your nose tackle and mid middle linebacker better play one because play well. Because Michigan State runs that, what they call their power O. He's right in here. 
right here, excuse me. And he's a guy that, that hasn't really shown up much this season, but boy, does a great job of getting down the line. Got some help from Torian Smith as well. But they had a little line stunt on, and Williams makes the play, setting up a second down and 11. Pop wants Cousins for the end zone. Dive incomplete. Intended for tight end Charlie Gant. The old pump and go, and he had Gant open. Just a little bit too much pressure for him to get enough oomph on the ball. Did. Michigan State really likes to use their tight ends. They have three touchdown catches among the three of them. Would have been a yeah. tough catch, but one he should have. He had it cradled to his chest. Might have been uh, knocked free at the last second. Cousins has hit four of seven. Third down and long. Again for the end zone, and it had a man behind the secondary Cunningham. But the pass from Cousins is too far, leads yeah. him out of the end zone. Incomplete, it brings up fourth down. The two missed opportunities there, though, for Kirk Cousins. You know, had the tight end. Tight end probably should have caught that one, but then he missed B.J. Cunningham. So field goal attempt by one of the best in college football, Brett Swenson. Swenson, the senior from Pompano Beach, Florida. Has not missed a kick at all. Field goal all point after the season. This one a 42 yarder. From 42 yards, Swenson has no problem and kicks it right through. So the Spartans march down the field and get a field goal. They trail 7 3. Coke Zero bringing you Notre Dame football. The Irish await the, the kickoff as. The Spartans get a field goal from Swenson, who has it ready to kick. It'll be uh, Riddick, the deep man, along with Barry Gallup Jr. for the Irish. Swenson's kick taken by Riddick. Oh, Riddick getting to the outside. And the speedster turns the corner and is ridden out at the 45 yard line. The freshman with a 39 yard return. Well, Charlie White says he's the fastest guy on the team, and he said we want him to field every kickoff return if possible. Barry Callum had a couple of good ones last week, but this is the guy they want with the hands on his ball. Made a guy miss, sprint to the corner, and sets up Jimmy Clausen in excellent field position. Kendall Davis Clark with the angle able to get him out of bounds but Clawson starts from his own 45. Empty backfield with five wide receivers as Clawson maybe adjusting the play. Blitz comes from Michigan State and the safety valve is Golden Tate. Crosses into Spartan territory for a six yard gain tackled by Marcus Hyde. And our Adidas starting lineups for the Michigan State defense. Up front, uh, Anderson and Neely have a sack apiece. You see the linebackers, Jones is the heart of the defense. He leads the Spartans and tackles for the third straight year. He has 29 this season, tops in the Big Ten. And the deep ball been a problem for the secondary. Hyde is the number two tackler for the Spartans. Here's Clawson. Second down, scrambling, and he has room up the middle. First down as he slides to the 40 yard line. Well, throwing just about every down in shotgun formation, really running a two minute formation, really, two minute offense. This is what Charlie Weiss was saying to us yesterday. He said, hey, you know, we've struggled because we tried to force the run against Michigan State the last two years. We're going to open it up, just let Jimmy throw it. And this time he just kind of took it down and ran for the first down. And interesting, Greg Jones, who you just mentioned, does not have a tackle yet. This is the guy that averages 14 and a half a game. Jimmy Clawson has hit all four of his pass attempts for 72 yards. And zips it and it's caught. Michael Floyd's first reception of the game. First down, Irish, a gain of 17. He comes up limping on that, uh, you see the bandage on his right knee, 15 stitches in that knee. But this is a guy that has just been remarkable. He catch Tim Brown today for touchdown catches in the career. He's only a sophomore, number three in the slot. Good precise route, but a perfect throw again by Jimmy Clausen. Clausen remains perfect in the game. 
ticking down from 545 in the first quarter. Rudolph. Looks like the Spartan defense was ready for that screen pass to Rudolph. Tom, we mentioned Michael Floyd coming back from the injury a week ago. Late in the game, wasn't in the game with the last three minutes. There's the scar on his right knee, 15 stitches. They put this kind of patch on it, but you did see him after that last catch get up and was limping just a little bit. Yep. Still out there, though. Second down and eight. In an empty backfield. Irish going wide open to open this game against the Spartans. Crossing for the end zone to Floyd, and it's a touchdown. Well, that ties Tim Brown for career touchdown catches. Tim, Tim did it in four years. Tim's here to see it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, just a simple little route, but a quick, you know, well-designed offense, and Charlie Weiss kind of dialing it up, and then Jimmy Clausen executing absolutely perfectly, Tom. Floyd's fifth touchdown catch of the season. It was 22 yards. And Clausen now seven for seven and 112 yards. They're going to review it upstairs, apparently. Okay. We'll have another gander at it ourselves. Just, you know, a little corner route from the slot. Possession, foot in, touch. That should be a touchdown. Nick Trainer and Michael Semcheski of the Big East are our replay officials today. Remember, Tom, we said, you know, at the very top of this broadcast, there's a lot of good teams out there with a good receiver. It really has two guys on the outside. So for a defensive coordinator, I mean, it, it is really, really tough. And then you cover them, and you've got Kyle Rudolph. And Kyle Rudolph. And so, you know, Charlie Weiss has kind of put this offensive team together through the last four years of recruiting, and he's got guys that are really playmakers now. Alex? Hey, Tom. Well, the trainer is working on Michael Floyd's knee. The tape and covering that he had underneath that uh, little covering has split open. You saw him go down on the knee. They were worried that that might happen, so they had put some pads in there. Of course, you can imagine it's kind of painful. They are all prepared on the sidelines to restitch it. I saw those stitches, Tom. They're pretty darn fresh. Not nearly as painful, though, Alex, when you score a touchdown yeah. in your fifth of the season, yeah. as you saw the replay confirming, and Michael Floyd raising his arms in the touchdown signal. Tausch to attempt the extra point. Flag down, and the extra point is no good. There was a flag down early. Tausch missed it for the first time this season. Illegal motion. Offense number 40. The penalty is declined. Try is over. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen that. <laughs> never seen that. Well, he missed it. Notre Dame up by a 13-3. Go to irish.nbcsports.com now and blog live about the Irish while watching today's game. You can also get analysis, live commentary, and more exclusively on nbcsports.com. The Notre Dame offense today, nine plays, 134 yards. That's nearly 15 yards a play. And two touchdowns. Yikes, yikes. Well, Charlie had a little grin on his face yesterday when we talked to him. Taos kickoff to Winston at the five. Winston stacked up at the 25 yard line. Scott Smith was the first to hit him. And Scott Smith, their special teams captain, makes a lot of plays. So Kirk Cousins now down by 10, as you see our Notre Dame ticker with some other scores from action this afternoon. Yeah, you happy about that one, Tom? Your alma mater? Yeah, 31 27. The Wildcats win. Uh, Gators come to town next week, though. Yeah. Tebow Devon, and company. Devon Best to Cal, five touchdowns today. Well, he looked great, didn't he? Yeah. 
Here's Cousins on first down, handing off to Paulton Ray. Ray with a nice run, has a first down, lowers his shoulder and pounds to the 43-yard line. That's an 18-yard pickup. Kyle McCarthy had to make a saving tackle. Yeah, well, Kyle McCarthy does make a lot of saving tackles, but remember, Javon Ringer's gone. We said they're trying to find this identity in running the football. Carlton Ray, the redshirt freshman, is a guy they're trying to really develop, feed the ball to him. They really like to have two guys rather than the four they use now. But he, get the, he gets the start because he, as his coaches say, is reliable. That's Pass a pretty box. good vision on that play, yeah. too, didn't he? Strong, catches the ball well. Breaking it to the outside for the big game. First down, Spartans. Irish with the blitz. Cousins pass. Caught by Dell. First down, Spartans, a gain of 13. Mark Dell is a guy that Kirk Cousins is happy to have back in the lineup. He said missed the first two games. Disciplined little out route against really kind of press coverage. Hey, Kirk Cousins actually just zips it in there. Kirk Cousins, a very, very smart guy. We talked about a guy that, uh, as his coaches say, prepares like no one other. Yep. Academic All Big Ten a season ago. Pre med student. In addition to that organic chemistry, he has an organic chemistry lab, genetics, English classes, no soft spots. Caper finds a little soft spot in the Irish defense there for a pretty good gain on first down. Here's a look at the what goes through every day. He said he has to juggle his time with football practice and classes and then study. And one of the big things is getting enough sleep. He says he's a guy that needs his sleep, and finding time for sleep <laughs> yeah, is not always that. that easy. Look at that. Yeah, that lab is three hours. You schedule that on Monday, generally their day off, but uh, yeah, that's a good load time. Cousins throws it in traffic, but Deion Sims makes the catch. A lot of tight ends in this offense, three of them. Deion Sims, a very talented freshman, highly regarded, guarded. Supposed to be able to play basketball for the basketball team this yeah, year. Going to play for the Spartans basketball, and, and a la Michael Floyd, using your body to yeah. get position there to make the catch. Caught a touchdown in the opener. All three of their tight ends have caught touchdowns. Sims limp to come in Gant. First down for the Spartans at the Irish 33. Notre Dame leads at 13-3. Play action fake by Cousins. Stands in the pocket. His pass broken up at the last minute. Intended for Deion Sims again. And Kyle McCarthy was able to deflect it away. Yeah, you know, great play by Kyle McCarthy. And we've been saying that for two years, Tom. Remember, he set a record last year with tackles by a Defensive back with 110. This you see him on play action fake. And I'll tell you, Deion Sims was trying to put a little double move on him. And Kyle McCarthy gets that right hand in there to knock the ball away. Good play by McCarthy. There's what he has done coming into today's game. Second down and 10. Blitz from the Irish. Handoff. Nothing doing for Ray. It's McCarthy again. Yep. Yeah. So run support made a nice play on the pass. He's a guy that was destined to be, you know, play for the Irish. His grandfather, the captain of the baseball team, his brother, number 28, right through the middle of the screen. Just kind of really playing linebacker on that play. From Cardinal Mooney High School in Youngstown, Ohio, quarterback, running back, defensive back, and punt returner there, all state quarterback. Already has his finance degree from Notre Dame. Third down and 10. Cousins pass is too high and incomplete intended for Dell. So fourth down now for the Spartans as they send the field goal team out again. You know this will be his longest if Brent Swenson can make this. 52 yards his career long is 50. His longest this season 45. He said he has not missed a kick this season. Well, there's some confusion by the Spartans at who's on the field goal team right now. That comes a late yeah. man out. Play clock still has eight seconds. 
So Swenson from 52. Sends it on its way and it hits the upright and is no good. Brett Swenson trying to hit a career long 52 yarder just off by inches. Well, he told us this week I aimed just right of middle, but it didn't get the hook, Tom. Bang off the upright. And no good. Text the word Irish to 51515. Mark D'Antonio and the uh, Spartans have seen Notre Dame bat a thousand here in the first quarter with a minute 42 left. Irish have had two possessions, two touchdowns. D'Antonio in his third season as the Michigan State head coach and 2 0 against the Irish. Shotgun and uh, completes the pass to Rudolph. Kyle looks for a block, <laughs> lowers his head, and has a first down. A gain of 12 yards for well, Kyle Rudolph. We've seen that play three times now, and uh, all for first downs. Kyle Rudolph talked to him yesterday. How about the size of his hands? <laughs> They're absolutely huge. Swallow up your yeah. hand. Yeah, he has gloves that have finally fit. He said, once the blocking out in front of him, good wide receiver blocking. That's uh, Deval Camaro with a block. Yeah. And uh, yeah, those gloves, you know, you said last year they kept splitting on him. Even though they were the biggest they made, they just weren't big enough. Now he finally has some that fit. Triple X. Tate. Golden Tate. Close to midfield. Well, you know, he, he, Troy Weiss wants to see how Michigan State can play in open space. And right now they have not played particularly well. And they're forcing, you know, tacklers to tackle guys in the open space. And in particular, Kyle Rudolph and Michael Floyd have had their way. Final minute of the first quarter. Here's the Coke Zero offensive comparison so far. In the empty backfield. Caution with a scramble up the middle. Dives ahead short of the first down to the 48 of the Spartans. Kevin Pickleman covered him. Going to bring up a third down for the Irish. Third down and four. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. And they'll just let the quarter run out without attempting another play. So when the second quarter begins, it'll be Notre Dame's first third down of the afternoon. The Irish leading at 13-3 will return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Coke Zero. Start the second quarter, first third down of the day for the Irish, and they line up in the Wildcat formation. Armando Allen to receive the direct snap. Allen ran for a touchdown from this formation earlier. And he, after the fake, takes it to the left side and is stopped short of the first down by Chris L. Rucker. Well, Charlie likes to go for it on fourth down, as we've seen over the years, Tom. But he said, what's different about this year, he says, hey, I feel like we can actually run it for first downs on third and two, third and three. In the past, they've had to throw it. So fourth down in the yard is the Irish go for it. Robert Hughes and Armando Allen in the I formation. Hughes the fullback, Allen the tailback. Two tight ends. Clawson pitches to Allen. Allen gets the corner, tripped up right at the first down marker. I think he's got it. And looks like with yeah. the spot he will have the first down, but not by much. That's a little change of play, though. You know. Mark D'Antonio is going to argue about the spot. David Rolf. His uh, defensive end made the play. Everything looked like I formation is going to be a power play on fourth and one. You fake it, then you pitch it out. Get Armando Allen to the corner for the first. Nice call again by Charlie Weiss. He's got uh, he's really dialing it up. You know, tight ends, wide receivers, backs, Wildcat. Here's the Wildcat again. Pass, handoff. Try to pass Tate and 
will be tackled before he can get the ball away. I think you're actually trying to throw that ball Clawson. to Jimmy Clawson. That's a scary thought. <laughs> well, he's, uh, he was down at the bottom of the screen. Is Jimmy Clawson right down here. And this was going to be a pass. And unfortunately, uh, Golden Tate's <laughs> left-handed. And Jimmy wasn't open either. So uh, Golden Tate did the right thing, just kind of hung on to it. <laughs> you think Jimmy was happy about that <laughs> secretly? Yeah, secretly, yes. Second down and 12. And that's a false start against Big Sam Young. Well, that's the first penalty, right, I think? Yes, they, they had last week they had nine, including Offense. five holding Offense. calls. Number 74, five yards. First penalty Down accepted. The there was one Second. on the extra point that was missed. Yeah. Well, Sam Young, Mr. Florida, got a fourth year, four year starter out of Florida. We talked to him a couple weeks ago and said, hey, uh, you know, you were recruited by Florida. Any regrets not going there, winning a couple of national championships? He said, absolutely not. not. Wanted to get out of my comfort zone. And uh, he's played particularly well this season. Started every game of his career. As you see, it's reached 41. So now second down and 16. Crossing chased. Sets up the screen to Allen. Armando Allen. There's another flag down as Allen is chased out of bounds. Right into the Irish bench. Well, that time, Greg Jones. We talked about him from his middle linebacker position, forcing Jimmy Clausen to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker than he wanted. 14 and a half tackles a game, but uh, really I think makes the uh, probably their best pass rusher as well. One of those guys coaches said you just cannot get him off the field. He won't come even if you <laughs> tell him. Penalty was a holding call against the Irish on Trevor Robinson. As we said five last week Tom. Oh, the calls were costly, weren't they, to the Irish? So now it's going to be second down and 25. The Irish go with Robert Hughes and Jonas Gray in the backfield. Play action fake. Clawson sacked. First, first, sack of the year. first sack of the season, and Eric Gordon of the Spartans got it. The Eric Gordon, Tom, 43, played really well last week, even though they, they lost, playing what they call their will linebacker. But a guy that the pocket absolutely collapsed. Two inside blitzing linebackers. Irish can't pick it up. Jonas Gray kind of missed the linebacker, number 25. He could make up his mind which one to block. So a 10 yard loss and Clawson still down. Clawson with such a brilliant start today, he's 10 for 10. But shaken up on the sack, the first one given up by the Irish all season. Been remarkably durable in his three years, Tom. You know, we've seen him really take a lot of shots. Yeah, he had plenty of experience early, didn't he? Yeah, this was just a little bit awkward. Went down on the knee, then some guys tumbled on him. Kind of saw it coming and yeah. ducked under and still took a pounding. Well, Irish happy that he walks off the field. There he is walking to the Irish bench. Well, welcome to the game, Dane Christ. Dane Christ, the sophomore quarterback from Canoga Park, California, who has passed twice and hit them both this season. And he all he has to do is face a third and 35. <laughs> from Notre Dame High School, highly recruited. Prep All American there. Didn't play last season. And here he is, and I imagine they'll play it safe with him, don't you think? No, that's not. No? Charlie's. Uh, How about a screen pass? Robert Hughes. Okay, good defensive series for the Spartans. Yeah, time. they look good on that yeah. one. Helped by some Irish penalties. But they look good. Jonathan Strayhorn made that stop. And so a lift for the Spartans now after their defense for the first time today is able to stop the Irish.
So here's Eric Moss into a punt for Notre Dame as Clawson tries to get his bearings on the sideline. Moss did not have a good game last week, including a 28 yarder that put the Irish in deep trouble. Coach White said he'll be on a short leash today. This is a nice one, though. Martin calls a fair catch, perhaps interfered with on that one. The Irish pick it up. But the ball is going to be dead. I don't see a flag. I think his own man ran into him, Tom. I don't think it was an Irish. But then in order, I think it hit him. I got blocked him. Yeah, walls. Well, that's caused Don't, the unless it touched his right heel. It's going to be ruled a touchback. It'll be the Spartans ball at the 20 yard line. Lost with a pretty good punt. Notre Dame leads it by 10. Spartans ball. When we return to action here at the 20 yard line, the ball did not go into the end zone. It wasn't a touchback, like I said. It was actually down by Kyle McCarthy there and did not touch Keyshawn Martin. Yeah, right. So well, the Spartans take over. You know, we just saw uh, Clawson limp off, and here's kind of what happened after the play. Awkward, you know, sack by Clawson. He was trying to get off the field, and then ultimately just kind of went down, and the trainers came out. Alex? To Jimmy as the trainers had him on the bench there with his leg up it looked like they were going to do something to his right ankle they took his shoe off but then he threw his shoe back on and yelled at them to give him his helmet got up and started running back on the field obviously they did not need him so we'll check in and see if they're going to look at that ankle again just just kind of an awkward awkward sack that right angle caught under his body and under Eric Gordon You know, amazing thing, he's not been pressured much this year, Tom, right. really. The offensive line has protected Jimmy Clausen quite well. So Spartans with a first down at their own 20, and we said we expected Notre Dame to get a lot of fresh bodies in the defensive line, and Sean Swinar makes his first appearance up front for the Irish. Kirk Cousins gives way to Keith Nickel, the quarterback on this series, and Nickel gets five yards on first down, and then a flag for a late hit out of bounds. It'll be called on Robert Blanton of the Irish. Well, Keith Nickel, the transfer from Oklahoma. More of a dual threat than Chris Cousins. Expected to see him some. There is numbers for the season. Yeah. Protecting the football. Let's have a look at what happened out of bounds there. Personal foul. Yeah, right right here, Robert Blanton at the very end just kind of grabbed his ankle. I don't know, though. He engaged him in the field of play. That's pretty tough. I guess you give up at that point, though, don't you? Yeah, you just got to let go. Yeah. So the penalty tacked on to the game makes it a first down. Spartans at the 40. Cause our nickel, the quarterback under center. And the handoff to Caper. Larry Caper crosses the 45 yard line. Well, the crowd's reacting. One of the Irish, I think it's keeping Lewis Moore, lost his helmet. Felt that he may have gotten pushed. After Lewis Moore puts his uh, helmet back on, he was way back upfield. His helmet was back yeah. there. Let's see, let's see what happened. Yeah, the right part of the right yeah. down there. Yeah, and then uh, he got pushed by Andrew Hawkin, I think. Yep, the fullback. Nickel in the shotgun. Quarterback draw. Nice move by Nickel, and he has a first down. Crosses midfield to the Irish 45, a gain of eight. And an eight flag, another late flag comes in. Well, said nine flags last week. That may have been their undoing yeah, last week I against agree. Michigan. But you can see how Keith Nickel is a little different type of player play. than Crystal Cousins. Late hit number 22 defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. Called on Harrison Smith, number 22, the free safety for the Irish. The late, late hit. hit. Bottom of the screen, number 22. 
right there. That's uh, interesting that uh, penalties hurt both teams in their losses last week. And suddenly on this drive, the Irish miscues have been costly. Timeout Irish. Spartans driving when we come back. The University of Notre Dame campus, Notre Dame Stadium there. As we zoom in on Jimmy Clausen on the Irish sideline after being shaken up on the last possession. But meanwhile, the Spartans are driving, trailing 13-3. They have a first down at the 39 of Notre Dame. It's going to be a pass, a halfback pass. Keyshawn huh. Martin and Blair touchdown. White with a touchdown catch from Keyshawn Martin. Keyshawn Martin, remember high school quarterback, completed two or three passes last year. This is not anything terribly new for the Spartans, but great play call by Don Treadwell, the offensive co uh, coordinator. And then Blair White, you talk about you know the, the hands of the Notre Dame receivers. Top of the screen is number 25, Blair White. And a guy that just kind of fakes a little block and then has opened a pretty good throw by Keyshawn Martin. And a pretty good catch by Blair White. Yeah, he's been doing that for two years, Blair White. Brett Swenson, the extra point is good. Boy, so penalties have really undone the Irish. So the Irish helped with the penalties, and then uh, the clincher was a trick play, a Keyshawn Martin halfback pass to Blair White for the touchdown. Yeah, Blair White, you know, you in that kind of route, you just kind of lazily go down, pretend you're going to block number 25, block the defensive back, don't rush it. He didn't. He waited it, you know, timed it perfectly. And then it was a pretty doggone good catch by Blair White. His third touchdown catch of the Boy. season as Michigan State went four plays 80 yards in a minute 12 helped by two Notre Dame penalties that accounted for 30 yards. You know, said Blair White you know is one of those dependable receivers but again that sometimes that's uh, you know you say hey I can't get deep that's not the case with Blair White once again he gets behind the defenders. Jimmy Clausen, will he be able to come back in? Here's Swenson teeing it up to kick it off. Riddick and Gallup are deep. That's a look at Theo Riddick. Onside kick. Michigan State recovers it, but it didn't go 10 yards, did it? I don't think it went 10 yards. Unless it did first and then batted it back. I think it actually originally went 10 yards, Tom, and then it got batted back. Look at the yellow line, but not officially 10 yards is that yellow line, but uh, let's have a look. See, Tom, boys, well, that is past the 10 yard mark there, and then it kind of bobbles back. Andre Anderson recovers it for Michigan State. Well, that's you, you know, don't that's, think Swenson put reverse English on it and made it come back to you. <laughs> but that is really, you know, good execution, good game plan. I mean, they obviously saw something. It went 10, but ended up at nine. The ball, after being kicked, went 10 yards and was recovered by the kicking team. First down. Yeah, just what we said. Beautiful execution by the Spartans on the onside kick. The same play that burned them last week against Central Michigan. Mark D'Antonio calls for the onside kick, and the Spartans have it right back down three. In football is brought to you by Chase. Introducing Chase Sapphire Card. Unlimited rewards, unbelievable experiences. Get yours today at chase.com slash sapphire. Sun winning off the Golden Dome of the Administration Building here at the University of Notre Dame. Charlie Weiss has seen Michigan State execute the onside kick and take over now. First down. Keith Nichols still a quarterback. Play action fake. Rolls to his right and delivers a strike. Go back and have another look at that onside kick. And you heard the uh, referee. It went 10 yards and then bounced back to about nine. Perfectly executed. Has to get past the 40. 
And right there, that, that is. Now, I've never seen an onside kick go to 10 and no, go back to I 9. No, either. But that's the rule. It passed the 10 yards, and then the Spartans recovered it. And then they get eight yards on first down. It's second down and two from the 46 of the Irish, or 46 of Michigan State, excuse me. And a first down run by Glenn Winston as he crosses midfield into Irish territory. Like Winston lost his shoe in the process, putting it back on. And today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. First down for the Spartans. All the momentum with the Irish in the first quarter. Spartans have turned it around here in the second, driving down three. From the 49 of Notre Dame. Nickel scrambling. Unloads it and it's incomplete. Would have been back to the line of scrimmage off the hands of Charlie Gant just as well. It'll be second down. Well, we mentioned Keith Nickel transferred from Oklahoma. That was because Sam Bradford was named the quarterback, and so he decided to come back to his home state. There's Keith Nickel in that uh, Sooner uniform. And you just wonder, you know, with the injury to Bradford, had he stayed, yeah. whether he would have been the Sooner quarterback. Well, there's Bradford, the uh, Heisman Trophy winner last year. So now Nickel, who's from Lowell, Michigan. Whistles will stop that play and flags fly for a false start against the Spartans. False start. Offense, number 83. Five yards. The down remains second. Hold on, Charlie Gant. Well, bottom of your screen, number 83, just kind of moving, uh, what would you call it, that part of his body? His posterior? That's a nice. Yeah. This way, Santa. Mm -hmm. Gant, who committed the penalty, goes out. Brian Linthicum replaces him at tight end. See the penalties again, they really hurt both teams in their losses last week. Nickel being chased, trying to set up a screen, gets it complete to Ray. Caught and Ray caught from behind. Balls loose and recovered by, well, nobody yet. Looked like Notre Dame had it for a moment, then it goes out of bounds. Hey, tell you what, Tom, Catherine Lewis Moore made forced to fumble, and I want to tell you, it was a hustle play by Catherine Lewis Moore, I can't believe. Rushing the passer. Behind, huh? Yeah. He rushed the passer, and then he didn't give up. And you see number 89 left of the screen come in late. And strips him of the ball. And then but, Torian Smith comes up with it. But what I like about the play by Lewis Moore is he was rushing the quarterback, turned around, and then made the play. And, uh, he did get it cleanly for the uh, turnover. And Jimmy Clausen back on the field. Yeah. Clausen's shaken up the last series back out there. And the pass dropped. Right. Mike Ragone dropped it the first incompletion by Clausen today, and it was on the money. Right, it was perfect. Alex Flanagan told us during one of the breaks that it was Jimmy Clausen's right toe. That was uh, being attended to on the sideline. And that's that. And the right foot is the one you kind of step off of, and you, as you deliver the ball, so kind of hop in yeah. there afterwards. Here's the Wildcat formation. No, nope, not. Excuse me. Boston under center. Hand to Allen. Armando Allen. Nice run. Wow. Digging his way to a first down. Yeah, last week against Michigan, I've never seen Armando Allen run that well. I mean, we've been watching him for three years, Tom. You know, went down easily in the first two. But last year, I thought, or last week, it was really kind of a breakthrough game. Not in just in terms of yardage, where he had 139 yards, but the kind of the yards, the way he got those yards. You know, breaking tackles, running through people. So there's what, probably five yards after contact there, Tom? Yep. He has a touchdown run already today, and there is a first down run of 12. Here's Allen again. Tough going this time, though, against the front of the Spartans. It's going to be second down and about nine for the Irish. 
Michigan with another victory today. Minnesota and Cal. Cal looked good. Yep. Ohio State. Mike and Toledo. Alabama, big win. Second down. Allen broke a tackle. And caught from behind at the 35 yard line. Yeah, that, that has been the theme this year for Armando Allen, Tom. Just as you said, broke a tackle. Did a lot last week. MetLife is providing today's aerial coverage. Visit MetLife.com to learn more about the Blip program's 20 plus year history. MetLife guarantees for the if in life. Third down and three Irish. Okay, they have not stopped. Michigan State has not stopped Kyle Rudolph on the little bubble screen. We're going to get Allen run it. And he has a big hole off the left side. And caught from behind and dropped inside the Spartan 30 yard line. Another nice run for Armando Allen. You're right. Paul Duncan, Chris Stewart, left tackle, left guard for the Irish. Really created a nice little scene for Allen to, to work his way through. 72, you see Duncan just kind of pushing his guy out. Eric Olson on the inside, dominating his guy. Trent Robinson saved. Worst damage with the uh, tackle for the Spartans, but it's a first down Notre Dame at the 27 of Michigan State. Jonas Gray is the running back. And the pass is complete to Bobby or Robbie Paris. Bobby Paris out of bounds by uh, Robinson, who makes the uh, second straight play for the Spartan defense. Trenton Robinson getting his first start for Michigan State. Okay, the coaches say, uh, you know, just kind of worked his way into the lineup. So Paris with his second reception of the season sets up a second down and six. Handed off to Jonas Gray. Gray bounces to the outside. And out of bounds as he goes down the sideline inside the Spartan 10. Greg Jones forced him out of bounds, but a nice run from Jonas Gray is the Irish throwing the ball all over the yard early. Now get their running game in gear. Yeah, you know, you're right. As soon as Jimmy Jimmy Clausen got injured, they started to go with the ground game. Good block again by Duncan. Nice stiff arm right there by Jonas Gray. And then just a speed to the outside ends up in the tuba section. Of the Michigan State band. 15 yard gain for Jonas. It's a nice change of pace, and you know, the Irish with a bevy of good running backs. Armando Allen is back in. First and goal at the seven yard line, and timeout taken by Notre Dame. No, Michigan State took the timeout. The signal was the other way. We've got a timeout in a three point game. Irish threatening. 4.53 to go, first half. Notre Dame leading by three and with a first and goal at the seven yard line. And Michael Floyd has been big in these kind of situations. A lot of jump balls to him. Lawson throwing it up for Floyd. Pretty nice call there, Pat. Well, it's not hard, and he comes down with about 90% of them. It's a dangerous. I didn't see a signal, did you? Floyd comes off. Floyd. Boy. I think they signaled he was out of bounds. The ball goes back to the yeah. seven yard line. So uh, Floyd was not able to get the uh, foot down and was injured. It'll be second and goal from the seven. Another look. Possession. A nice acrobatic catch, didn't he? Foot on the line. Is that right I foot? It, I, I thought it was in. Left foot down. He had possession. That's a touch. Yeah. You're gonna have to look at that one again. And, uh, Notre Dame's gonna call timeout. I don't think the right foot was in. You just need the one foot. His left foot looked down uh, in to me. So Floyd, who had the stitches in his knee, the 15 stitches in the game against Michigan after the game, now is uh, injured again. It's amazing, though. You know, you just 
you almost if you even you, if you know what they're going to do and throw it up, he just you know he was a great high school basketball player and just kind of adjusts the ball so well, Tom. Down on his left shoulder. That was a catch. And uh, looks like a challenge from Charlie Weiss. I think it's a good challenge, Tom. I, yeah. I, I think it's a touchdown myself. Okay. Up above the possession. Left foot down. It's a touchdown. And right foot may be down. It's close. Well, you don't need, but the you only don't need, need one. That. Yeah, yeah, you don't need that. I think that gets reversed. Or to give him a touchdown. But two star players for the Irish go out with injuries. Uh, although Clawson came back, still didn't look 100%. And the second straight game, Michael Floyd comes up with an injury. Yeah, that's, Alex? That's a touch. Hey, Tom, well, Michael Floyd came off the field looking quite frightened, actually, and the sideline here has been silenced ever since. He's sitting on the bench with the trainers. They're really looking at his shoulder and kind of collarbone area, but from what I'm seeing right now, it doesn't look very good. What ruling on the field stands was a catch. Notre Dame has a timeout and has no more challenges. Well, they ruled no catch. Well, I... Uh... I disagree, actually. <laughs> so the ruling on the field stands. The challenge by Weiss is disallowed. And it's second down and goal from the seven. Well, you got your Wildcat again, Jimmy yep, Crossing Carson down here. Crossing at the bottom of the screen. Allen and the Wildcat. Armando Allen fakes and keeps. This is the play they scored yeah. the touchdown on earlier. And this one comes up just a little short. You're right. A little, the same play he ran, what, 12 yards, I think, for a touchdown in the first quarter. Good inside blocks. Eric Olson, Trevor Robinson, Chris Stewart, those guys inside. There's Chris Stewart kind of buckling up his knee pads. Watch the center. And then the guard, Chris Stewart, coming around. And then uh, Trevor Robinson put the block on his guy. Yeah, that's a pretty good offensive line play. Michael Floyd walking to the Notre Dame locker room. It's third down and goal. Three tight ends. Boston fumbled. Scramble for it. Boy, good hustle by Allen. I think he recovered. Armando Allen. And at the bottom of that pile. You just wonder how much that toe of Jimmy Clausen still bothered him. That right toe trying to push out away from the center, Tom. Yep. Just never had it and then had a chance to get it and couldn't. And then Armando Allen scrambling around, able to cradle it as he's piled on. So it sets up a, a Taos field goal attempt. 22 yard attempt by the freshman Nick Taos. Tausch boots it up and it hooks through. So Nick Tausch hits the 22 yard field goal as the Irish settle for three to up their lead to 16 to 10. Now let's go to Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio for an ADT game break. All right, Tom, thanks very much here with the ADT game break in Northern Illinois visiting West Lafayette and Purdue. The Huskies, a 13 point underdog. Somebody apparently forgot to tell the running back. Miko Brown, the inside move, breaks a tackle, goes outside. The game had been tied at seven. That was no longer the case. What a big win for Northern Illinois. Danny Hope, the Purdue coach, now one and two in his first season in West Lafayette. Tough start for him. Tom, back to you. All right, Jimmy, tough start indeed, and the Irish will go to West Lafayette next week to meet the Boilermakers. And right now, the Irish have a six-point lead over Michigan State with 3.14 left in this first half. A further concern to the Irish, though, would be the injuries to Jimmy Clawson, who has still been able to play, and to Michael Floyd, who's already gone to the locker room. <laughs> 
Winston and Jimerson will be deep to receive the Tausch kick. Tausch gets some pretty good hang time on this one. It comes down to the four yard line to Winston. Glenn Winston. Good coverage by the Irish special teams that time, denying him the 20 yard line. was the first man on the scene. Well, this is the uh, game everybody's going to be talking about the game and the stadium as the new Cowboys Stadium is unveiled. The next chapter of the epic rivalry between the Giants and the Cowboys. Sunday night football night, Bob Costas hosts Football Night in America live from Cowboys Stadium. Coverage beginning at 7 o'clock Eastern tomorrow on NBC. Well, looks like Kirk Cousins back in. That quarterback from the Spartans. He has 306 left on the clock. Starts from his own 19. Cousins scrambling out of the pocket. Rifles it complete. That one had some mustard on it to Dell. Good for a first down as it covered 18 yards. Yeah, a little mustard, a little relish. And, and I tell you, Kirk Cousins did a good job. Presence in the pocket, right? Felt a little pressure inside. Just steps outside that pressure by himself some time. And they're their hurry up offense as well, even though they have two timeouts remaining and, and catch the, the Irish. The Irish scrambling yeah, to get there, and it looked like uh, Sergio Brown was offside as well, just trying to run onto the field. So the Spartans with the hurry up, Cousins gets them in quickly into the play and lined up, and they get the Irish penalty. Yeah, they had a whole bunch of them. You're still allowed 11, right, Tom? I got one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's been a Plus Sergio Brown, I think, was offside, number 31, as he tried to run onto the field. There he is right there. On the defense, five men did not get off the field. Five yards, previous spot, repeat first down. You know, Telespirit only goes up to 14 now. If there were 15, I could have done that. <laughs> so Cousins with a heads-up play, and the Irish defense, they get their uh, heralded freshman linebacker, Manti Teo, onto the field here. And again, a mix up in the uh, defense. They have a late man running off the Irish. First down and five. Short drop and a toss to Cunningham. BJ Cunningham. Well, that's a nice design when you have a linebacker, Scott Smith, chasing the wide receiver. Yeah, Scott Smith got him, but not until he gained 11 yards. Yeah, and the Spartans come right back after the Notre Dame field goal marching down. With two and a half and counting. Would you say Michigan State kind of weathered that early storm? Yeah. It looked like Notre Dame was going to score a touchdown every time they touched the ball, but uh, a couple of penalties got Notre Dame's way, and the Spartans have kind of responded. Handoff. Pretty tough yards, uh, a couple of yards for Larry Caper. Coming up, uh, the U.S. Bank Notre Dame halftime report. Jimmy Roberts in New York. We'll hear from Bob Costas, who's with Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth. As they prepare for the first ever regular season game with a brand new Cowboys stadium. It'll be the Giants and the Cowboys on Sunday night football. And of course, have all the highlights of the big games today. Oh. Incomplete pass yeah. and a late flag comes in for the pass interference on Gary Gray defending Blair White. Yeah, Gary Gray got his left hand on the back of the receiver right hand kind of you know, knocked it away but it was the left hand of Gary Gray that caused the interference. Blair White. Yeah he got a hooked him too. Yep. That's a good call. Gary Gray the junior from Columbia South Carolina. What Blair White told us about his quarterback Kirk Cousins this week when we met with him. He says, you know, he's got character, charisma, and he communicates really well. And those two have something special between them. Yes, they do, and both uh, excellent students. Meanwhile, that's the sixth penalty against Notre Dame. They had nine costly miscues against the Wolverines last week, and they're headed in the same direction. From the 26, first down, Spartans. Cousins hit as he throws. Another flag is down. Oh boy, I'll tell you, Mark Dale did a great job of, of keeping of preventing the interception there. Yeah, Darren Walls had dead aim on it, but yeah. 
You know, the blitz caused Cousins not to be able to get enough juice on it. It's going to be holding against uh, Michigan State. But I'll tell you, Mark Dell did a great job. Sometimes Third the offensive play holding, 64 offense, 10 yards, previous spot. Moss. Sometimes first the down. offensive player has to play defensively. Up at the top, number two. See, uh, Darren Walls is going to step right in front of that. And a terrific job by Dell to keep it away from him. He may have scored, actually. He's yep. only down that sideline. Could have gone by all the way down the sideline. Instead, it's first down and 20 now after the penalty from the Irish 36. Wide open, and the pass is caught by Cunningham. And Cunningham gets a big chunk of that yardage back with a minute 30 on the clock. Yeah, you know, Cunningham is a guy, interesting guy for the Spartans. A guy who played, really played high school basketball, only played football his last two years, and still really learning how to become a wide receiver, but kind of felt that soft spot there. Did a good job. Two guys covering Mark Dell. He got 11 yards up and back, setting up there a second and nine. Blitz comes, Cousins unloads it quickly and completes it to Cunningham. And Cunningham pushed out of bounds at the 14 yard line by Sergio Brown. Well, Kirk Cousins, the pre med student, superb student, is just, you know, he's he is a smart guy and he plays like that. Dissecting is Dissecting he in, in his lab. Well, he's going to right. He's going to be, <laughs> wants to be a surgeon just like his grandfather who played uh, football in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. 11 yard gain on that one, Pat. Clutch first down by the Spartans. Their drive continues from the 14 of Notre Dame. Four of six on this drive for the sophomore from Holland, Michigan. Hand it off. Caper. Flag is down. Well, that's that power O play that Michigan runs. Kyle well, McCarthy saved the touchdown at about the four, but there's a yellow flag. Personal foul, face mask, 89 defense, mm -hmm. half the distance to the goal line from the end of the run. Capra Lewis Moore. Yeah. He's the guy that made that hustle play on the fumble. Remember just uh, a few moments ago. That's seven first half penalties against the other. Yeah. Yep, there it is. No doubt about it. But I tell you that that power O that Michigan State likes to run. They've run it, I don't know, 60 times so far this year. They picked up eight yards plus the penalty on that run. Here they are in the I formation. First and goal from the two. Caper hit drives into the end zone for the Spartan touchdown. Hey, give Mark D'Antonio and his team some credit because it looked like early on, boy, it was going to be a, a big wipeout, but they just kind of hung in there, got some help with some penalties, and then Kirk Cousins and Keith Nickel. Have kind of you know led their team to a 16-16 tie. And the extra point upcoming, remember, Tausch missed an extra point. So Swenson can give the Spartans the lead. And he does. He's only missed one point after touchdown in his career. Just a powerful inside run. And, and the first get, lead today for the Spartans. You're right, Tom. And you know when you get down here, you just it just has to be a determined run. Again, Joel Friedman, the left guard, kind of pulls around for him. And excuse me, pulls around, kind of clears the way for him. Center does a nice job, Stepek. And then it's done the last the rest by Caper himself. So we've seen an onside kick executed well. They've, you know, they've, they've done a lot of things well defensively after kind of getting their bearings. And you know, uh, we talked about which team would be able to recover from last week, those tough emotional losses. And if you pile onto that, the success Notre Dame had early, Michigan State had every reason in the world to hang their head, and they have not. Take a look at our uh, Coke Zero scoring summary. Nine plays, 81 yards, covered just over two minutes. It was a beautiful drive, aided and abetted by Notre Dame penalties. Swenson will kick it off to Riddick.
Theo Riddick. Oh, what a nice special teams tackle. Yeah, that was 40, uh, Roderick Ginrette. Ginrette with the uh, tackle, the junior from Tampa, Florida. And we were told that he's going to be a headhunter on kickoff team. I'm not sure what this scramble is about. It's Notre Dame's ball is the signal. I guess the ball may have come loose. Let's see. Will Brown can't cost a fumble. Yep. Routine. Did a, come out. What a play by Jenrette. Yeah. So, less than a minute now. First down, 24 yard line of Notre Dame. Jimmy Clausen still in there. I think I saw Michigan State signal a timeout. And they did indeed call a timeout. Notre Dame with one timeout remaining and 55 seconds. Tom, I'm still scratching my head on that play to Michael Floyd down the end zone, which they took a long look at. I think this is a touchdown. Has possession there. Left foot comes down way in bounds. I don't even care about the right foot. This play was also injured on. Where they called it no catch, no touchdown. Here's Leo Riddick on the uh, the fumble. It does come out, but it's caused by the ground. I don't think they're going to overturn that. Was recovered by Michigan State. Andre Buford. One more question looking. is, did he yeah. fall on a Michigan player? State player? I don't think so. After further review, the play on the field is confirmed. The runner was down before he fumbled. Michigan State has charged the timeout. Yep, runner down before the fumble. Okay, well, they started out in a two-minute two, two minute offense, right? That's the way the game Notre Dame started. Well, Jimmy Clausen finds himself exactly in that kind of situation. And they had great success. Although they had an empty backfield most of the time, this time they'll have Armando Allen. And they had Michael Floyd, too. Yep, they don't have him now. He's injured, went to the locker room. Boston has hit 11 of 13 today. Steps up, whips it out, complete for a short gain to Camara. He's wrestled down, good coverage by Jeremy Ware. And the clock continues to tick. Irish with one timeout left. I tell you, you know, we started the, sh the show by talking about the Notre Dame wide receivers, but the Michigan State defense, Pat Narduzzi's defense, have done a pretty good job against Tate and Floyd when he's in the game. Clawson steps up, scrambles, dives to the 35 yard line. It will be a first down, I believe. Depending on the spot of the football. Yeah, they, it is a first down. Go look at Clawson limping away. That's what you don't want him to do yeah, is have to scramble exactly. like that. Timeout Notre Dame. Clawson limping over to his coach Charlie Weiss who's uh, calling the plays of course. And Clawson <laughs> looks a little worse for wear doesn't he. Well we've seen his maturity and his leadership skills blossom his physical play too he's been brilliant early in the season and showing us some of his toughness now. Well I think we learned that about him yeah. two years ago. And the Notre Dame halftime reports brought to you by U.S. Bank. It's the lineup of what we'll see shortly with 17 seconds of playing time left. Both these teams fighting trying to fight their way back into the top 25 and Got some work to do. From his own 35 yard line. Draw play, handoff to Armando Allen. Allen will have.
for a first down, which will stop the clock. So they really have to get down to about the 25 yard line to give uh, Tausch a legitimate shot. Austin will spike the ball here, no doubt. Michigan State called a timeout before the spike. Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator, of Michigan State, told us this week, "Hey, you know, no big plays, and then when they the defend those deep balls that they've done so well, Notre Dame has done so well with gathering this season." And earlier they uh, gave up those big yep, plays, they but they regrouped, made adjustments, and it's been a whole different football game just since that time. Turned on a couple of those Irish penalties, right? Yeah, Irish penalties again, as they were a week ago, have been. Costly. Seven for 67 yards in this first half. Seven penalties, 67 yards after uh, committing nine against Michigan last week. Back to Jimmy Clausen's injury, which uh, saw him grimacing there on the sideline just a moment ago. An inside blitz by Eric Gordon in the first sack given up by the Irish yeah. this Jimmy, season. Jimmy wasn't sure how to get down, how to avoid yep. Eric Gordon. And Dane Christ is in, and Kloss is going to get an early trip to the uh, locker room. So Dane Christ, just 10 seconds left. Going to wing it as far as he can. Three Irish receivers there. Tip drill looks like it is picked off by Michigan State. Intercepted by Trenton Robinson on the final play of the first half. So the Hail Mary pass intercepted by Trenton Robinson to bring the first half to a close with Michigan State leading Notre Dame by one, 17 to 16, as we go down to Alex. Charlie, you challenged the play that appeared to be a touchdown. It was called an incomplete pass. What did you see on that play? Well, his foot, his foot was in bounds, but I guess they must, they must have thought he was bobbling it. You know, I, I saw his foot come, well, what I thought his foot come down in bounds. So that's why I challenged the call. Penalties have killed you in this first half. What do you make of the penalties? Well, I mean, penalties are the back-to-back -back personal foul uh, calls uh, killed us. But what really killed us was a ball, when we had ball handling down there on the goal line uh, when we got the ball, you know, on the central line at the time. We, we can't make mistakes like that. Two of your stars appear to be fairly seriously injured. How does your play calling change with Jimmy's toe injury? Well, I gotta, you know, I can't hang him out to dry. Just, you know, spread him out all over the place. But we got to do what we got to do to win the game right now. We're down by one. All right, Charlie, thank you. All right, they are down by one. Great comeback by the Spartans, who took uh, the momentum away from Notre Dame late in that first half was remarkably good. But you're right, this half and perhaps the next couple of games. I mean, a right toe injury, it's going to be severe for quarterback. All right, that first half really turned around after the Irish scored on their first two possessions. Now it's time for U.S. Bank serving you. It was 22 years ago today that Tim Brown electrified the crowd with two punt returns for touchdowns against Michigan State. Of course, Brown would go on to claim the 1987 Heisman Trophy. And just moments ago, he was honored here at halftime for his induction into the 2009 class of the College Football Hall of Fame. U.S. Bank, all of us serving you. And throughout the season, we're looking at Notre Dame Stadium with Michigan State leading the Irish 17-16. And we'll take a look at our Coke Zero first half stats. Remember, Notre Dame on their first two possessions scored touchdowns, averaged over 15 yards a play, but boy, did that ever turn around. After that time, Michigan State got their defense regrouped, held the Irish to only a field goal and an average of three point yard, 3.4 yards per play. So two different tenors of the first half. Swenson's kick is taken by Gallup. Barry Gallup Jr. had a nice return against uh, Michigan. Comes to the 30 yard line on this possession. And we'll see if Jimmy Clausen comes back out. Remember with that injured toe. And yes, he is making his way onto the field. And not with the best gait either. 12 of 14 he's had so far today. He's had a brilliant game, 139 yards in the first half. Had a brilliant season thus far. First down Irish from the 30 yard line. Go, 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 
Quick drop and to Golden Tate. Tate. Game tackled by the Spartans after a gain of maybe four yards. John Mish was the first to get there. We talked about Jimmy uh, that right toe and here's what he looked like. He went left a little early went up that tunnel to play like a champion tunnel right there kind of limping his way up. And uh, Jim Russ the longtime trainer looking after him at halftime. This time they line up in the Wildcat formation on second down. Tate in motion. Allen fakes to him and keeps. And he will be about a yard short of a first down. Expect to see more of the Wildcat with yeah, Lawson uh, it's, hobbling. It's going to be interesting their offensive coordinator and head coach, Charlie Weiss, how he kind of tries to manufacture plays. I mean, he's Charlie Weiss is an aggressive play caller, but right now he's got a, a quarterback that's injured. And so you may see some more Wildcat. You know, we see him more under center already than we did those opening drives in the first half. He hasn't really been in shotgun much since he injured that right toe. So third down and one. Allen is the setback. Pawson's under center, keeps it on a quarterback sneak. I'm not sure they want to have him take that pounding, but he picks up the first down. And of course, the big controversial play in the, in the first half was Michael Floyd. Was he in or out for a touchdown? You talked to the replay officials at halftime. Yeah, I went to the, into, uh, the replay official booth, talked to the Big East official, said, hey, there's a continuous catch rule. He must have the ball, possess, possess the ball. When he goes down, I still think, Tom, in either case, it was a touchdown. I don't think that ball comes out until he's already hit the ground. He's already flat on his back before it comes out. Yeah, I thought it was a touchdown earlier, but even if you listen to the logic, I still believe it was a touch. Boston with a play action fake and all day to throw. Looking for Tate downfield, and he has it. Golden Tate. Touchdown. No, out of bounds. Out of bounds at the five. The yeah, limping Jimmy Clausen just heaves this one to Golden Tate. At the top of the show, we said Michael Floyd and Golden Tate are a little bit different. Golden Tate really good after the catch. Golden Tate is a high school running back. Number 23, the inside receiver, receiver, just run a long, deep crossing route, saying, throw me the ball. Pretty good coverage there by Robinson. Gets knocked out at the four-yard line. But, boy, is he so good after the catch. It surprises. We said he dropped two balls yeah. last week, which is very uncharacteristic of him. So first and goal, Irish, from the five of Michigan State. And off to Allen. Hit in the backfield and stopped at the line of scrimmage. From Michigan. And Eric Gordon as well. Cole Neely got a piece of it. So it'll be second down and goal for Notre Dame. That's the sort of uh, play they had success with early on when they scored on their first two possessions. Michigan State was able to stop that. Yeah, the Wildcat again now. Yeah, but again, yeah. it was, you were asking, you can see more. There's Jimmy Clausen down here. Well, you rightfully pointed out with any quarterback, maybe we see more of this. Allen, going to pass for the touchdown. Robbie Paris. We talk about manufacturing big plays when your quarterback is hurt. Charlie Weiss said that, you know, we run this Wildcat for over a year. So we have, a, in his terms, a bunch of plays. First pass we've seen, and it's a touchdown pass. On the right side, just kind of a little bump and then run by Robbie Paris. Good call, good execution, and Wildcat is here to stay at Notre Dame. And Taos with the extra point good. And Notre Dame has regained the lead. Jimmy Clausen's pass to Golden Tate set it up. Boy, is that a good throw? And then Armando Allen with a pass to Paris. Notre Dame football brought to you by Coke Zero. Now has reached 23 for the Irish students. And the helmets are raised for the Taos kickoff. Glenn Winston. 
stutter step and then slammed down at the 20 yard line by Zeke Mata. He's done a good job on special teams today for the Irish. Let's go back to that touchdown and that wildcat formation with the quarterback Jimmy Clausen lined up as a wide receiver and maybe he's asking, you know, he's asking for the ball now. He's open. Throw it to me. Give it to me. Respect for yeah, the defense. No, they they say, well, no, he's not. They're not going to double cover him, but uh, <laughs> happy that his teammate threw a touchdown pass to put him up 23-17. Over with Dane Christ on the sideline. So now it's the Spartans' turn to respond as the Irish regain the lead. They'll start from their own 20-yard line. The quarterback is Kirk Cousins. Excuse me, it is Keith Nickel. So Nickel starts the second half. And Larry Caper. Caper slammed down at the 25 yard line by Ethan Johnson as we check in with Alex. Hey, Tom, well, we had thought coming into this game that Kirk Cousins was going to be the starter. Of course, he did start, but Mark D'Antonio told me at the half that he saw some opportunity in this game where he could rotate his quarterbacks and kind of seize the moment. He told me that he will continue doing that throughout this game where he sees opportunity. Of course, both of these quarterbacks very aware that they are fighting for the starting job. So Cousins on the sideline with a chart. Keith Nickel is under center. Fumble the snap. And the flags come down. Well, you know, we talked to the coaching staff about Keith Nickel. Illegal Nichols. snap. Offense, number 66. Five yards. Two down the center. Second. John Stepek. But you know Keith Nickel, you know he was locked into that quarterback battle with Cousins in, in the first two games. The ball doesn't comes up a little early, and uh, they played about equal equal time those first two games. And uh, but this is a little bit different. They're expecting Cousins really to go most of the way today. Second down and nine, and a caper. Nothing doing. Another, another tackle by Kyle McCarthy, who continues to kind of make those plays on defense. Sixth tackle of the game for McCarthy. Here's our Coke Zero quarterback comparison for the two Spartan quarterbacks. Now third down and nine. Right in front of the Notre Dame student section. Nickel had to get rid of it early, and it's incomplete. Pressure coming from Notre Dame. Gary Neal. In the form of Gary Neal. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, pressure is one way to make your quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. And although Gary Neal didn't get the sack, it was nearly as good. Gary Neal has uh, really kind of lost a starting job to John Ryan, but kind of you know, the rotating people, as you were talking about, rotating more and more defensive players. <laughs> Aaron Bates will punt on fourth down. Sails it long and deep to Golden Tate. And Tate right up the middle. Nice return as he crosses midfield into Spartan territory. Punt boom 51 yards, but then Tate brought it back 23. Good field position. Danny Fortner with a special teams tackle. Irish ball when we come back. A lot of offense today. The Spartans averaging 6.2 a play, where the Irish are 7.6 a play. Notre Dame leads it 23-17. Cost changing the play apparently. And going for Paris. As we go down to Alex. Hey, Tom. Well, Michael Floyd, we saw him injure himself in the first half on that controversial play. I wasn't sure if it was his shoulder or his collarbone that they were working on. I have been able to confirm, though, with Notre Dame that Michael Floyd has broken his collarbone. So a big, big blow, Tom and Pat, for Michael mm. Floyd and the Notre Dame Irish offense. Yeah, yeah huge. Indeed, indeed. I've had a couple of those over the year. You don't, oh. over the years, you do not come back uh, in a week or two with a broken collarbone. 
Second down and 10 to Armando Allen. Breaks free up the middle and gets about eight yards to the 40 yard line of the Spartans. Tackled there by Trent Robinson, first to hit him. So sobering news for the Irish. Their outstanding sophomore receiver, Michael Floyd, with a broken collarbone today. And Jimmy Clausen hobbling with an injured toe. And how important is he to the Irish offense? There's a pretty graphic explanation of just that from last season, and he's even better this season. Allen has the first down. Well, he's an entirely different runner than a year ago. What do yeah. you think, Tom? Armando Allen, entirely different. Even he said, hey, I was going down way too easily a year ago. And one of the things he worked on as he stayed here in South Bend over the summer was getting stronger, breaking tackles, and, and running hard. New uh, running game coordinator for the, for the team and new offensive line coach. And they just look different running. Rondo Allen continues to pile up the yards. Came in averaging nearly six yards a carry. Gains a couple on that first down run. We talked about Greg Jones, the outstanding linebacker for Michigan State. Him came in averaging 14 and a half tackles, three on the day. Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. Irish will have a second down and about eight. As Charlie Weiss calls the play, always thinking a player two ahead in that sequence. He scripts the first 15 plays and they look like a charm today, didn't they? Oh, Hand off to Gray, Jonas Gray. He'll be stacked up at the 30 yard line. You know Knows playing well in there, no surprise. Eric Olson had a chance to talk to him yesterday. He's the center, number 55 for the Irish. And talking about his parents, who are wonderful people. A father, a firefighter from New York City, his mom, a nurse. Retired firefighter in Staten Island. And well, what about that? They want to be close to their son this yeah. his senior football season. There they are. They, they moved here to South Bend for the football season. And his dad, Andy, is the guy who uh, cooks dinner for the offensive line on Wednesday nights. Hosts the offensive line on Wednesdays. And something different every time, too, but just a <laughs> lot of it. Yeah, well, you know those firefighters, they're pretty good cooks. Yeah, that's how he learned to cook in the, in the firehouse when he was a firefighter. Golden Tate shaking tacklers. Yeah. See that? Yeah, and it's uh, the, the parents, Andy and Joanne. Mom was a nurse and uh, you know, during, worked in an emergency room and 9-11 kind of uh, had about a couple hundred people come through her emergency room. Father, Andy, actually went into uh, the towers and saved a couple of people. And their son, Eric Olson, uh, respect as a big tattoo of a firefighter yep. and uh, the yeah. World Trade Center on his arm. Spoke to the uh, luncheon yesterday with about 1,200 people or so there. He's all dressed up in suit and tie as we talked to him. Not much there for Jonas Gray. Tackled by Denson. This is really an important series right now for Michigan State. I mean, they really, I think, have to force Notre Dame into a field goal attempt at least. Michigan State kind of really kind of clawed their way back in the game, but once again, uh, in that opening drive of the first half, or the second, second half, Notre Dame puts another touchdown on the board. Mark D'Antonio, who brought his uh, entire staff with him from Cincinnati, and his uh, defensive coordinator, Pat Narduzzi, I thought did an excellent job of adjusting in that first half. Indeed. Oh. Clawson running with a flag down. And Curls it off the uh, chest of Kyle Rudolph. I tell you, Armando, a wild one. Excuse me, Tom. Armando Allen saved Jimmy Clausen from maybe injuring his other big toe. Um, what, you know, as you're a running back, you just got a, enough of Greg Jones to allow Clausen to escape, and so Jimmy's mom's going to send a thank you note to Armando <laughs> Allen. I guess so. Flag oh, offense number 72. 10 yards previous is line. for a Paul Duncan hole. Uh, you can see Jimmy he's still limping around. He is, but he's passed for over 200 yards, 15 of 18, hitting 83 percent. Remember, he had one dropped and then the one no touchdown call as well. So it, uh, that would be about, what, 93 percent, 94 percent. Did that in your head, did he? Yeah, just carry the one. 
Second down, 17. Caution heaves for the end zone. Tate dropped it. Dropped two last week. Really uncharacteristic. Last year we did not see Golden Tate drop the ball. Dropped two touchdowns against Michigan. Normally his hands are so strong yeah. they just clamp on and like a vice. Yeah, that's, again, perfect throw. Yeah. Kloss, boy, yeah. he is just so accurate this year. Jim, Jimmy Clausen, he and Golden Tate are friends, and he says, I, I asked last, but uh, Golden Tate dropped those two touchdowns against Michigan. I said, what did you do? And he said, well, <laughs> he said, he's one of the guys I can yell at, so yes. <laughs> I did. I yelled at him. Like a coach, he has to determine who he can yell at and who, who needs a little pat on the back. Tate gets the yells. That throw was off the money intended for Allen. Well, that, you know, we said that Michigan State defense had a rally. The Spartans did. Force a field goal attempt. So Nick Tausch. Will attempt a 47 yard field goal. It'll be the longest of his career. 42 yards the freshman hit earlier. Now sends it up and it is good. So the Irish get three more. And with five and a half to go in the third, Notre Dame leads it 26 17. And that's the Golden Dome, the famed Golden Dome of the administration building here. The Irish leading Michigan State 26 17. Two teams trying to rebound from upset losses a week ago. Michigan State led by one at halftime. The Irish have taken command so far here in the third with five and a half left. Glenn Winston bounced off a tackler and got it back to the 30 yard line. Scott Smith was the first to hit him. Well, it all comes down to this. Will Tiger reclaim the title of FedEx Cup champion? Don't miss the finale of the PGA Tour playoffs for the FedEx Cup with the Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola next Saturday, 2 Eastern, here on NBC. Tiger putting great again. Is there, is there more of a favorite in sports today than Tiger Woods? No, I'll tell you what, and throughout the world, people know him, don't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe the most famous athlete in all the world, despite all the soccer interest and everything else in other parts of the world. Her cousin scrambling free and then took a tough hit right to the midsection at about the 34 yard line from who else yeah. Kyle McCarthy. How many is that for him now? That's six that five solo tackles by Kyle McCarthy. You know Kyle McCarthy's had an interception in the first two ball games as well and had a chance to, we had a chance to talk to Kyle a couple weeks ago and he was saying you know I wasn't highly recruited but I think I've done things right. I, I went to class I graduated I worked hard played some special teams came a starter and now a captain. That's his finance degree from Notre Dame. You see some of the other scores with uh, the Gators with a big lead on the balls. Kind of a draw play handoff to Winston. And got back to the line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot more as Brian Smith hit him. We're going to see Washington 10 10 in the fourth quarter. Steve Sarkeesian, we're going to see him in a couple weeks. New head coach in Washington. It's kind of changed the attitude around up there. Yep. Big third down for the Spartans right now. Coaching against his, uh, his former staff. So the Spartans facing a third down and seven. Blitz. Cousins. And it's complete for the first down. Clutch catch by Mark Dell on the throw under pressure from Kirk Cousins. It covers 12 yards. You talk about scanning the field. I mean, Kirk Cousins would look at right first, and then there's that clock in your head. You say, hey, that guy's not coming open. So I got to come back to the left side, and boy, Kirk Cousins did. Some good protection on the left side by Rocco Cerrone, and then the wide open Mark Dell. 
Five receptions, 64 yards for Dell, including this one for the first. That was a heck of a throw by Cousins. First down, he has a man wide open. It's Gant, the tight end, who's all the way to the Notre Dame 30 yard line. 24 yards. We talked how the Michigan State Spartans like to use their tight ends. Gant can go get deep at an 82 yard touch uh, a year ago, but right up the seam, playing the double coverage outside, leaves your tight end with a chance to work the middle. And, and G indeed, Gant did just that. He dropped one a little bit earlier that was close yeah. to being a touchdown, but hung on to that one. First down, Michigan State. Larry Caper. It's a pretty good hard run by Larry Caper. Yeah, kept churning away, didn't yeah. he? Freshman who studies uh, YouTube videos of Adrian Peterson. Pretty good object yeah. to study from Battle Creek Central High School, prep All American and All State there. Had a record 4,226 yards in his high school career. He's a true freshman from Battle Creek. <laughs> Powerful guy at 215 pounds. Dell or White, the motion man. And Glenn Winston hurtling his way. Still will be short of the first down. They'll mark him at about the 23 yard line. Well, you know, if you're Mark D'Antoni, you, you know you have a good field goal kicker, right? It's a nine-point game. See so Rocco Cerrone uh, sort of limping around a little bit and uh, then going down to a knee. The young man that has uh, both Italian and Romanian heritage. That's actually Foreman that went down to a knee, but Rocco was limping around too. Joe Foreman, you know, we talked so much about that play they call the power O, where he kind of leads it when he's pulling from his left guard spot. Remember they're missing their center starting center Joel Nitschman as well with an injury so that interior line getting very I guess thins the wrong word the replacements are kind of big guys too. <laughs> Joel Foreman being helped uh, to the Michigan State sideline. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say if you're a quarterback and you think about hey the situation here, nine point game right still in the third quarter just don't get sacked. Third down at three. Cousins pass is caught and he got a block as well and out of bounds inside the 10 is the tight end Brian Linthicum. Well that's all three tight ends we've seen have caught a pass. Brian Linthicum a, a transfer out of Charlottesville Virginia St. John uh, St. Anne's High School small little high school there in Charlottesville transfer from Clemson. 16 yards Pat. Yeah. Good little design and, and Kirk Cousins he is you know like Jimmy Claus both of these guys are really accurate. Guys aren't open by much. From the seven, first and goal. Paper trying to stretch. Touchdown. Good counter punch drive by the Spartans. And Andrew Hawkins, the fullback, you know, the, these guys never get fed a ball. You're, you're out there to block, and number 45, Andrew Hawkins, cleared the way for him. And he just hugged that block. Watch number 45 in front of Caper. Good block by uh, Gant, too. And he just kind of kicks the defensive back out and you know, creates an easy lane for Larry Caper. Good drive. Swenson, the point after. Yep. And it's blocked. Point after block. So Notre Dame missed one earlier. Now it evens up on the blocked point after by Ethan Johnson. 26 23. Zero scoring summary Michigan State goes 70 yards in eight plays four minutes off the clock as Kirk Cousins three for three on that drive. So it's a three point game as Swenson is set to kick off for the Spartans.
Good kickoff taken by Theo Riddick. Riddick with a head of steam. There's a penalty marker down as he advanced it to about the 35 yard line. During the return, holding 21 of the returning team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. So Barry Gallup with the hold, huh? They yeah, returned, returned so well last year. Yeah, there's the hook. Yeah, Dragon number 33 from the Spartans down. Right in front of the official. Ninth penalty of the game by the Irish. This matches last week. Yep. 116 to go, third quarter. They take over at the 17. Pawson on target to Camara. And Camara is across the 25 yard line for a Notre Dame first down. And thanks to MetLife for providing today's dramatic coverage. MetLife has the protection you need for the most important ifs in your life. Visit MetLife.com today. Say Churchill Downs of college football, Tom. <laughs> I don't see any twin spires, but you have the Golden Dome and Touchdown Jesus. Yeah. I guess that's. So first down, Irish on the toss to Duval Camara. Pawson hit from behind as he delivered to Rudolph, who promptly dropped it. And Pawson went down. Is that a backward pass? No, I mean, it, they said no. A backward pass, a pass that would have been live. Jimmy did take another hit. Greased. Adam Decker. Deck by Adam Decker. Well, I, I thought of that, but decided not to say it. I left it for you. On second and ten. Play action fake by Clawson. Hit again yeah, yeah. as he found Rudolph. Rudolph stopped two yards short of first down territory. Kyle Rudolph now five catches on the day for Kyle. And once again, Jimmy Clausen takes a shot. And that time it's Greg Jones. Was it Jones? That no, was 43. Eric Gordon. Kyle Rudolph five catches for 82 yards today. As the final seconds tick away for this third quarter. Third quarter will end with the Irish holding a tenuous three-point advantage. Over Michigan State at the end of three, Notre Dame 26, Michigan State 23. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Coke Zero. Started uh, brought to you by Coke Zero as we start the fourth. Notre Dame leading 26 to 23. Third down and two for the Irish. They showed blitz, then backed up. Here they come. Hand off to Allen. Armando Allen hit hard and did pick up first down yardage, but Chris L. Rucker put a strong hit on him after he had gained first down territory. Solid Sam Young, Trevor Robinson, right side of the offensive line, kind of doing their thing on third down. Even the tight end, Kyle Rudolph, who got chastised by Charlie Weiss after week one first blocking through a good block there. So the Irish first down and the ball at the 39 yard line of Notre Dame. Bobby Berger's in at fullback now. Allen is the running back handoff to Allen. A good first down runs by the Irish. I don't know, they have the, the, the average on first down, but they have kind of put themselves in a lot of second and five, second and fours after running the ball on first down. Chris L. Rucker made that stop of Armando Allen. The offensive line for the Irish took so much grief last year, Tom, for poor running, 
not giving Jimmy Clausen enough protection. But so far this year, remember they scored 35 points in week one, 30 in game two. They've scored 26 already, and they've run the ball much better than a year ago. Allen again to midfield and into Spartan territory for Notre Dame first down. Nice run by Armando Allen, the guy that uh, was out in that final drive last week against Michigan because of an injured thigh. Good read, good block again by Kyle Rudolph. That's two in a row by Rudolph. Greg Jones got a piece of the tackle along with Eric Gordon, and Gordon is still down. Injuries on both sides today. There's Armando Allen with a little limp. He's crushed for nearly 100 yards after 139 a week ago. This is a guy Eric Gordon has played played terrifically this year for the Spartans. So as they tend to Eric Gordon we will take a timeout. Notre Dame leads by three. First down Notre Dame 49 yard line of Michigan State. Clock ticking down from 1345 and Notre Dame up three. Clawson hands off to Jonas Gray. Gray gets a couple of tough yards. Armando Allen went to the sideline and was limping a little bit. There's Michael, Michael Floyd. Floyd. Yeah. Broke his collarbone, it's been reported. You saw Armando Allen, Jimmy Clawson with a bad big right toe. A lot of the skilled position players uh, got their bumps and bruises. You know, this, or breaks. Uh, this rivalry has a tradition of being a rock'em sock'em rivalry, and we've seen several players on both sides injured today. Blitz coming from the Spartans. And sack is Clawson by Gerald Worthy. You know, Jimmy Clausen just is not quite as nimble in the pocket as he was before that injury. One of the things he's done a great job of this year, a la Tom Brady, that's what Charlie Weiss has had to work on, is kind of move it around the pocket, not trying to scramble, just kind of dodge a guy, they can get rid of the ball. But uh, you know, Jarrell Worthy, and again, Jonas Gray, I think that's a second whiff by Jonas Gray, that time of Jarrell Worthy. Worthy, uh, the Richard freshman from Hubert Heights, Michigan, has two and a half sacks now this season. Third down and long for the Irish. Boston's in the shotgun. He has Allen back in the game. As Boston hangs it up deep. Tate. Great incomplete. Yeah, about Rucker. Chris L. Rucker, who's had trouble defending the deep ball all season long. We were talking to Pat Narduzzi, defensive coordinator. Said he was shocked that he hadn't played better, but you can't cover it any better than that right there. Just the old, they call it nine for a go route. And again, they're trying to match up Golden Tate against Chris L. Rucker, who's their boundary corner. Head turned, perfect timing. Beautiful. Did, didn't get any better than that. Most punts on fourth down. Fair catch called and made by Martin. Keyshawn Martin. <laughs> So 12 minutes left in this one Notre Dame by three now let's go to Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio for a Geico game break. Well Tom Cal is visiting Minnesota today and Javid Best an absolute caveman third straight game with at least 100 yards running the ball but of greater significance five rushing touchdowns the first bear in 88 years to do that so Cal wins big and best puts himself front and center in the Heisman discussion don't you think indeed he has to be a, in a, you know in the conversation we saw some of his plays early in that game he is pretty amazing Charlie Gant catches that one from Kirk Cousins Al McCarthy with another tackle he's approaching double figures yep Al McCarthy's had again another big defensive day that's uh, eight, six of those solo, though. You know, they, they keep them separate solos and assisted. And then we said he's not necessarily a punishing tackle, but the guys ultimately always go down. And sometimes it's the difference between a score or not. So oh, you, you don't absolutely. care if it's a form tackle as long as you get, get the down. job done. On second and four. Wow, right up the middle with a tough hit. 
Larry Caper was met at the line of scrimmage. Ian Williams hit him. It's the best we've seen Ian Williams play this year at nose tackle. And remember, the Irish were gashed up the middle a couple of times this year for the first two games. But right up the middle, number 95. He's going to fight off his guy, puts the stuff on him. Now, he's not playing as many snaps, Tom, so maybe that maybe is so. part of the thing. More rested. Third down and three. Kirk Cousins has hit his last eight passes in a row. And there's number nine to Dell. And Dell breaks free. Dell's down the sideline, gets a block. Walls able to get him out of bounds. Harrison Smith it was. 59 yards, 59 yards to Mark Dell. Okay, that's a good catch and run on third and three, but remember the tackle of Harrison Smith. I mean, Harrison Smith did a great job of catching up with Mark Dell. Perfect read by Cousins, and on these slants, if he can get it out in front of the receiver, you have a chance of run after uh, to run after the catch. So so normally, uh, sure, Kyle McCarthy missed, he missed it. it, but his old teammate Harrison Smith. You know those hustle plays. You never know when a play like that can save the game. Well, Harrison Smith saved the touchdown for the moment, but the Spartans have it at the 22 with a first down. Winston. Well, you know, it gives their offensive line some love too, Tom. I mean, yeah. we talked about the Notre Dame's offensive line, but we had a, two guys who generally don't start at left guard and center playing now and opening some holes in that Irish defense right now. Alex? Hey, guys, well, on the left side of the ball, left guard Joel Foreman is sitting on the sidelines. Trainer's telling me that he's going to be out for a while with a sprained ankle. They're icing it right now. And as you guys said, the left side's so important because of the inexperience of the right. Yeah. Well, Ethan Ruland in in his place, Alex, and did a nice job the last play. From the eye, play action fake. Cousins goes for the end zone. And the catch made for the touchdown by Blair White. The, the reliable, dependable Blair White. Tom, there's room on every team for a guy like Blair White, right? I mean, every, every you, you run precise routes, and if you're a quarterback, what great confidence you have in a guy like White. You throw it up there, and you just know he's going to come down with it, just like Clawson has with Tayton Floyd. Boy, Darren Walls beaten on the inside move. Ran a little post corner. A terrific route, and then catch by White. Cousins now has hit his last 10 passes in a row. That one for the score as Swenson will kick the extra point. And it is good. Well, Michigan State and Notre Dame playing for the megaphone trophy. And right now the shout out goes to the Spartans as they come back with a touchdown pass to Blair White. Nine and a half left. Spartans by four. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Ammon, Pat Hayden, Alex Flanagan. The Irish and Michigan State going back and forth as the Spartans regain the lead. 30 to 26. Ready to kick it off. Swenson with a boot. To Riddick. From the goal line, Theo Riddick. Lowered his head and was slammed to the turf at the 26-yard line. There's by Pat. Greg Jones on special teams and there's his defensive coordinator Pat Narduzzi who spent the first three quarters upstairs but he told us he was planning to come to the sideline for the fourth quarter for his uh, energy and passion to uh, to transmit to his players and this was while we were away he went and talked to all his defensive players he's <laughs> quite <laughs> what you never see offense an emotional like guy that, you know? <laughs> So first down for Jimmy Clawson. Armando Allen. Another tough run for Allen that gets him about three. Four point game, nine minutes left in this ball game. You're one of your leading receivers, Michael Floyd, out of the game. But boy, Kyle Rudolph and Golden Tate are some pretty good players to go to as well. And uh, Armando Allen now has reached 100 yards rushing on 18 carries. An injured. Spartan on the field. Another injury, as we said, this has been one of those games where they've fallen on both sides. Yeah, yeah, Mark uh, D'Antonio said, hey, this is how oh, it's Greg Jones. That's Greg Jones. Yeah. That could be very costly for Michigan State if he's not able to return, but he looks okay as he trots to the sideline. He'll have to go out for a play. 
Coach, yes. Coach D'Antoni was saying this week, you know, that Notre Dame is, is a natural rival of theirs. And, and he said, hey, you know, years from now, 20 years from now, this is the game you remember. You remember, always remember those Notre Dame games. Of course, you remember Penn State, remember Michigan, but Notre Dame as well. Second down, seven. Blitz. Oop. Well, Duncan moved. Yeah, but it was he caused to move by the uh, the blitz yeah, yeah. to the time it correctly. I think it's going to be offside against Michigan State. Yeah, I think you're right. Offside, defense number 89, five yards. Down is second. Colin Neely. Call for the penalty. Number 89, Colin Neely, unfortunately, had a similar play last week at the end of the game when Central Michigan kicked a field goal that was no good because of the offsides. They got a second chance and they beat them 29 27. Eight and a half remaining. Now, second down and two. Another blitz. Clawson to Allen. Allen out of the backfield picks up the first down. Yeah, Randall Allen catches, blocks, he runs. And today he threw a touchdown pass. Yeah, he <laughs> throws touchdown passes, but boy, he's been running tough all game long, Tom. And as we said, a different Armando Allen. There's then a wildcat formation, 12-yard touchdown run to get the Irish on the board. Watch him break some tackles, lowers the shoulder, keeps the legs moving. Then again, the little read option, breaking tackles again, and as you said, threw a touchdown pass in that wildcat formation too. Charlie Weiss told us that that taunting penalty when he shushed the crowd at Michigan, he took so personally he had to try to get him back on his oh, feet. Boy. That was the only man back there was Rucker, boy. and it went incomplete. That was a busted route as big as you'll ever see. Well, the wide receiver absolutely stopped, which is inexcusable. Tate. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy Clausen's waiting, waiting, waiting. It's going to be, you know, to try for one of those jump, jump balls. I don't know what Tate's doing. Hey, it's, it's amazing Chris Rucker didn't intercept that. It was, he was the only guy back there. It was almost like a punt to him. Second down and 10. Another blitz. Clausen to Rudolph. Stepped out of a tackle, stepped out of bounds, but not till he got into Michigan State territory in a first down, gain of 13 yards. What, what a weapon a tight end like that is. Not only is he a big target, but he's fleet footed and he's hard to bring down. You know, he actually got scholarship offers in basketball first at Notre Dame before he turned his attention to football. And Jimmy Clausen once again, blitz after blitz after blitz, and Jimmy Clausen's getting knocked around. Rudolph. Career high 95 yards on his half dozen catches. So it's up a first down, Michigan State 47, clock at 720 counting. Low snap picked up by Clawson. And Camara catches across the middle. He'll be a yard short of a first down. Tackled by Brandon Denson. Clawson now 20 and 28, I think he is. Just like Cousins, just putting the ball right where it has to be. Processing the information, throwing it accurately. Got the play call in from the sideline, looks at his wristband. About 80 plays on that wristband, he told us this week. This will be second and two. Almost lost the handoff to get it to Allen, but Allen picks up the first down. Just didn't quite get there in time with that bad toe, maybe, as Kevin Pickleman tackles Armando Allen, but another Irish first down. Well, the Irish doing a couple of good things is, is watching the almost the missed handoff to uh, Armando Allen. Is Allen there? limping a bit. Yeah. You know, they're eating clock time, a good block by Trevor Robinson as he comes around the corner. Kyle Rudolph doing his thing on it, defensive end. But they're eating clock and picking up first downs. You got to finish it off with a score, though, if you're going to eat up the clock. Down by four. Blitz. Allen. Stepped out of a tackle. And then caught from behind when he was about to have a big game. Marcus Hyde, the strong safety, made a, may have been, certainly a long play saving tackle. 
That one could have been behind the line of scrimmage if not for Allen's efforts. It's kind of nifty, wasn't it? Yeah. He's had some powerful runs, now a, a nifty one. Greg Jones is blitzing every down. And that was just a that was that one little shoelace tackle by Marcus Hyde. Their strong safety. This is what Armando Allen did a lot of last year, kind of going down easily. Today we've seen him break a lot of tackles. Jonas Gray replaces Allen on this second down. Going to the end zone. And the pass is caught by Tate. Touchdown. The Jimmy Clausen throws a beautiful long ball. Let me tell you, I mean, he throws some really, really accurate deep balls. Not just talking about those little 12 yard outs. He's throwing yeah. it right on the money, 40, 50 yards down the field. I think Charlie White said that to us uh, yesterday, didn't he? He said, You talk about arm strength. Now. Yeah. They're going to review it. 33 yard touchdown strike to Golden Tate, who held on to this one. Warner Blitz, Marcus Hyde, the strong safety on him. That's a pretty tough catch. The foot in. He looked like his right foot was in. He had possession to me. Let's see. Another look. Possession, right foot in. I don't think he was bobbling. I think he had it. Controversial. Uh, They've got play earlier where they denied Floyd a touchdown on. Uh, That's a touch. That's a touchdown. May have gotten away with a little push though. Golden Tate. Well, that's also you know, notice that Hyde didn't turn his head around to the ball. Yeah, well, you know, he's a strong yeah. safety, not a corner. He's generally not used to making those kind of plays. Remember, it started with a corner blitz. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. There you have it. Well, crossing up to 282, two touchdowns, 21 to 29. And with a bad toe. Big extra edge. point coming up it is big it's to make it a three point game. Freshman kicker Nick Towns who missed one earlier. This one right down the middle. Eight plays 73 yards the Fincher finisher a 33 yard Golden Tate touchdown reception from Jimmy Clausen. 33 30. The lead has changed for the fourth time today as Notre Dame jockeys back on top 33 30 five minutes and 18 seconds remaining. Michigan State remember has beaten Notre Dame six straight times here at Notre Dame Stadium. In fact uh, counting some off years Notre Dame hasn't won against the Spartans here since 1993. With the kickoff. Winston. Stop short of the 30 yard line. And now let's go to New York. Jimmy Roberts for a Geico game break. And Tom, this is a big one. USC has had its trouble up in Seattle over the years. The Trojans, 19 point favorites over Washington today. And the Huskies behind former SC offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian. The huge upset, that's Eric Folk, the 22-yard field goal. SC now 6-8 and eight in their last 14 in Seattle. All right, Jimmy, what about that? The Huskies. Now, the Spartans take over at their own 29-yard line. They scored a touchdown their last two possessions. Nearly intercepted, broken up. On the play by Darren Wallace, intended for B.J. Cunningham, and that breaks a string of 10 straight completions by Cousins. Well, Darren Wallace almost had one in the first half, remember? Almost had an interception there, but did a great job of recovering. He was beaten, but you talk about recovery speeds, number two, the right part of the screen. The guy was open momentarily, but boy, he just, he just drove on it, knocked it away, he had a chance to pick it off and go. Second down 10.
Cousins under pressure. His pass too tall and incomplete. Blanton was defending the tight end Linthicum. A good pass rush too by Ian Williams. Well, and the uh, Washington Huskies with a big win over Southern California today. Two future Notre Dame opponents, and it's the Huskies that come in here in two weeks. We'll have the broadcast for you. The Washington Huskies and the Irish in two weeks. Washington with a victory over USC today. Two straight plays. They've gotten a lot of pressure on Kirk Cousins. Third down and ten. Blitz. Cousin stands in. His pass is incomplete. Cunningham had it for a moment, but couldn't hold on. I think you have to punt and play defense, don't you, Tom? Yes, with five the, minutes left. Essentially five minutes, 4:57. Yeah. It's only the third time today that Michigan State will go three and out. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. Good pass rush again. That has been the difference. You know, he didn't quite have the accuracy in the last three throws because of people around Kirk Cousins. So Aaron Bates punts it to Golden Tate. Good punt. And Tate has to backpedal to the 20 and is immediately hit and down. Good special teams coverage. Brandon Denson made the hit. The 51 yard punt with no return. Irish ball when we come back. 4.48 left, and Notre Dame leads Michigan State 33 to 30. The Spartans have won six straight games here at Notre Dame Stadium. Irish takeover with a first down at their own 19 yard line in the Wildcat formation. Armando Allen ready to take the direct snap. Spartan show blitz. Allen keeps and stops shy of the 25 yard line, and a late flag comes down. Boy, this is eerily similar to last week's game against Michigan. Sam Young looking like uh, he might be the guilty party. Uh, the holding call last week that uh, reversed a 72 yard play. Is that Trevor Robinson? Yes, it is. After the play, personal foul, 74 offense. Half the distance of the goal line. The gallon counts. Second down. Two weeks in a row, Sam Young's had uh, bonehead play late in the game. Number 74, right side of the screen. Late. Late throw down. Why do yeah. you do, why do you do that in this situation? Well, that was a, the holding call he had last yeah. week was a late throw down. Ten penalties. And nine a week ago. Andrew Nuss has replaced the injured Trevor Robinson at right guard for the Irish. Ten penalties today after nine, you might say, cost of the game last week. Essentially so. Timeout, Michigan State. They're first. Michigan State calls a timeout with 4.41 on the clock. Discussing something with this uh, Big Ten officiating crew. As you see, the other scores go by. So the penalty puts the ball all the way back to the 12 yard line. Irish in a hole with 4.41 left and clinging to a three point lead. Ed Narduzzi trying to dial up a couple of blitzes. He actually had some success getting after Jimmy Claus in this second half in terms of at least putting some heat on. Well, last week, of course, the big controversy, Charlie Weiss calling the two pass plays late in the game. Instead of forcing Michigan to use their two timeouts, you can argue that both ways. I think so. And Charlie said that uh, he wouldn't do anything differently in hindsight. So we'll see what he calls here with the second down and 17 and the ball precariously at his own 12. Trevor Robinson came back in to Tom at right guard. Lawson's pass. Caught. Golden Tate. Oh, 
Tate with a huge move to get the first down. Well, part wide receiver, part running back. He was a high school running back, still has that capability. I just, as we said at the very beginning of the broadcast, hard to bring down. 18 yards on this one. You know, Michael Floyd out with an injury. Here's your other guy. Rucker just kind of gets tripped, tripped up. I think he tripped over uh, Tate's feet. But then he just broke the tackle of uh, Roderick Genrette. And that's a nifty piece of running by Golden Tate. He's hard to tackle on punt returns too, Tom. Yeah, well that, well, that was a key move. Yeah. Here they go on the Wildcat. Allen knocked down by his own man. Tackled by Tate. Tate knocked him down as he went in motion. And Michigan State will take a timeout. You know, I, I like to use the timeouts on defense. You can stop the clock on offense, but you use your timeouts on defense. That's, That's what Pat Narduzzi's doing. Jimmy Clausen now has reached 300 yards passing today. Set a record against Michigan last week with over 300 yards. Most ever by a, an opponent against the Wolverines. So Notre Dame and Michigan State going back and forth at Notre Dame Stadium where the Spartans have won six straight. Both teams trying to bounce back from upset losses, last minute losses a week ago. Notre Dame dominated early, but then Michigan State came back. They led by a point at halftime. The second half has been going back and forth. Irish with a three point lead, 33 30, but facing a second down and 15 with 358 still remaining in the game. We've been a good screen team this year. We haven't seen many screens to the backs today. Hand off, Armando Allen. Allen with a pretty nice run. Yeah. And the clock continues to roll. Spartans down to their final timeout. Greg Jones and Trenton Robinson combined on the stop. Yeah, and for Pat Narduzzi's defense, this could be it. I mean, they're going to have to force some pressure on Clawson on this third and seven to force a punt. We've gotten some pretty good pressure by Greg Jones up the middle. Hadn't made a lot of tackles, but Greg Jones for his defensive coordinator Narduzzi's done it up the gut. Here's third down and six. Clawson's in the shotgun. Blitz. Clawson's pass. Incomplete. Deflected, perhaps, as it was intended for John Goodman. And looked like pretty decent defense. Yeah, good defense again. Greg Jones forcing a little bit earlier throw by Clawson. And the coverage by Davis Clark. We had to turn all the way around. Good coverage, though. Pressure inside. There's the, there's the blitz by Greg Jones, as we said, and also Mitch. So Moss with a punt and a flag down as the fair catch was made by Martin. Okay. Only 36 yards on the punt by Moss, who only had 28 on the crucial one against Michigan last week. Illegal block in the back number 30 in the 32. 10 yards, first down. It was, it was on Mike Anello, I believe, their outstanding special teams player, Notre Dame. He was blocked in the back. By Trawick. There he is. Right, well, That's Anello. That was, yeah, was 29 Rucker. The uh, penalties, of course, hurt Michigan State last week in their loss to Central Michigan, too, and that was a costly one. So it puts the ball back at the Spartan 20. Just under three minutes. Kirk Cousins finds a man, a tight end right in the center of the defense, Brian Linthicum. 15 yard gain, first down, Michigan State. Blanton and Harrison Smith try to get the ball away from the big guy, but they couldn't do it. Now they're thinking touchdown, but remember, they have an excellent kicker in Brent Swenson. Career long of 50 yards. Missed a 52-yarder earlier. Cunningham 
Makes the catch short of the first down. We see Narduzzi for Michigan State as their defensive coordinator. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator of the Irish, is a guy that's got to dial up some pressure on Kirk Cousins as well. And talking to John, this is the situation he relishes, trying to outthink his opposing offensive coaches. It's second down and two. Pass is complete. That'll be a Spartan first down. Linthicum makes another grab. Good protection. The offensive line it was a quick throw, but you know, Kirk Cousins had plenty of time in a good lane, throwing lane to his tight end, Linthicum. The officials huddle. Run around the 45 yard line. Three, four, two, three, four. Adjusting the clock to two minutes, 34 seconds. Ball just at the 46 yard line. Cousins. Cunningham caught it. Taken down immediately short of the first down on the tackle Ray Herring 216 remaining remember if they're going to think in field goal they have to get to about the 33 30 or 30 yard line to give their kicker a decent chance Kirk Cousins crossing route it's complete and a tackle broken Cunningham breaks another Finally collared close to the 30 yard line by Robert Blanton. That gains 16 yards. It's a Michigan State first down and in field goal range. And once again, Kirk Cousins throwing that slant route out in front of the receiver so he could run after the catch. Under two minutes. Cousins has hit his last five. Pump once. Goes on the slant intended for Cunningham in, or intended for Dell and incomplete. First miss on this drive by Kirk Cousins. Buck stops at a minute 43. From the 30. Second and ten. Yeah, you know, Blair White's been kind of quiet recently. There he was in motion. Cousins looks his way, but goes instead across the middle to. It is to Blair White, but uh, not a deep pass, just underneath. Third down. Crucial play. Cousins winds up. His pass on the rebound caught by Cunningham. First down. On the rebound is right. High school basketball player has just played receiver for a couple of years and he stood, stayed with it. Boy, and, and Kirk Cousins, is he in the presence in the pocket? Ray Herring gets a, gets a tip ball up in the air, but DJ Cunningham just hung in there. Got the foot down. That, that's a heck of a play and really, really good poise by Kirk Cousins. Still have a timeout this Michigan State. From the 18. Cousins pumps once, goes the other side. Wide open and two long capers out of the backfield. There wasn't an Irish defender within 20 yards of him. You know, sometimes when you have a guy so wide open, you take a lot off it, and I think Kirk Cousins did that. He should have just drilled that to Larry Capers. He just tried to lob it into him. Capers was worried about catching the ball and staying in bounds, but he was open. You're right, Tom. 20 yards. A minute 10. Cousins knows he had one there. And a penalty marker. Right is on. to the penalty. Michigan State called the timeout. Their third and final timeout. So prior to the penalty, timeout called by Michigan State. Mm -hmm. I think they had 12 guys on the field, but they called the timeout before the 12 men on the field. 
So it'll make it second and ten from the 18. With a minute ten on the clock. Keith Kirk, uh, Kirk Cousins is going to remember that throw to Larry Cape. Oh. Missed opportunity. You know, as much pressure as John Tenuta is bringing, and this Michigan State offensive line is doing a pretty good job of kind of keeping people away from Kirk Cousins. And the two new starters today in this offensive line for the Spartans. After the slow start, Tenuta's going to bring some more pressure here. Good football game. Cousins has hit seven of nine on this drive, but missed the touchdown. Looking to redeem himself here. From the 18, second down. Cousins chased, unloaded under pressure. It's intercepted. Kyle McCarthy. Flag is down. McCarthy still going. McCarthy with a cutback and tackled at midfield. Mr. Dependable, Kyle McCarthy with the interception. And Tom, with the, for the third game in a row, Kyle McCarthy's led the team in tackles, and for the third game in a row, he's had an interception. And he might have saved it. Penalty marker down. And the pressure on Cousins, though, yeah. forced him to make an errant throw. And Kirk Cousins has made nothing but good decisions today until that one. But pressure can cause you to make some poor decisions. And again, then that overthrow to Larry Caper, that's the one that Kirk Cousins is going to remember the most, even at the interception. Pressure by Darius Fleming. So Kyle McCarthy is uh, again off to a great start for the Irish. Looks right first, comes back left, then he realizes I got to get rid of it. You know, it just you can't throw it like yeah, that. Throw it across his body, yeah, late down the middle, and that usually leads to bad things. McCarthy with two back pass breakups, nine tackles, and now perhaps a game-saving interception. Michigan State can't stop the clock. Well, to remember how good their field goal kicker is, that, that's just one you, you have to know the situation again. You can't try to force it in that situation. And Jimmy Clausen, despite injuring his toe early in the game, has passed for 300 yards today. So, including the Hawaii Bowl last year, he now has four straight 300 yard passing games. The first time a Notre Dame quarterback has ever done that. <laughs> A big old whoo! <laughs> sigh of relief from the Irish faithful. Man, what a good ball game. It was a good ball game. These two teams went toe to toe. And Notre Dame will come out on top and break that six game home losing streak to the Spartans. Yeah, remember they collapsed a couple times last year, the Irish did. Remember late in ball games? Boy, just, you know, that this is kind of a uh, signature win in, in that sense for the Irish. See uh, Kirk Cousins and Jimmy Clausen, the two opposing quarterbacks, as we go down to Alex. Guys, Charlie looking for somebody here, but we'll go ahead and ask him this question. Charlie, this one an awfully close one, eerily reminiscent of last week with a yeah. different outcome. Tell me what's going through your head the last two minutes. Well, when when they you know when they got down there after you know Ray almost intercepted that ball, and then they got that that one. You say, oh no, not not again. But, you know, Kyle came up and made the big play, which which was which was great for us. You know, and you know, maybe that's the one that just gets you over the hump. How big of a monkey is off of your back? My back? I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about those kids. Did this win, though, on your top hey, ten list? It I'm, was important. I, I, I'm worried about those kids in the corner over there, Alex. I'll tell you the truth. I'm not worried about me. But Charlie, this is a big win. You've lost yeah, to this team. A, it's a big win for Notre Dame. Not a big win for Charlie Weiss. You know, these these kids fought their asses off. Excuse me. Uh, these kids, these kids, these kids, these kids fought their butts off, and you know they, I'm just happy for them right now. This game doesn't come without a little bit of cost, though. I understand that Michael Floyd has a broken collarbone, and of course Jimmy injured as well. How does that hurt you guys? Well, well Jimmy was okay. You know, he's, you know, Jimmy's okay. You know, Michael, that'll be a big loss. 
Well, that's what we got to do. You got to bounce back. Somebody else got to step in. All right, Charlie. We'll let you get to the alma mater. Thank you. And his son, Charlie Jr., with his dad as the uh, players line up for the alma mater. This will be uh, sweet after the hard fought victory over the game Spartans of Michigan State. So Notre Dame wins 33-30 over Michigan State. Jimmy Clausen passed for 300 yards. Armando Allen ran for 115. Golden Tate seven receptions for 127 yards. But <laughs> it was Kyle McCarthy, really the heart and soul of this team in so <laughs> many ways, that made the game saving play. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Dependable, Kyle McCarthy. Again, third third game in a row, he's led the team in tackles. Third game in a row, he's had an interception. And of course, that's our Coke Zero play of the game. The yeah. pressure on Kirk Cousins yeah. causing him to make the that was Darius Fleming. Throw. Yeah, Darius Fleming and uh, you know defense didn't play their best game, but boy, they were opportune at the right moments. John Tenuta got dialed up that at the right moment. It was a costly victory in that Michael Floyd suffered a broken collarbone, but the Irish pull one out against Michigan State, 33-30. Be sure to go to NBCSports.com right now for Notre Dame post-game coverage, including live press conferences. And don't forget, in two weeks, the Washington Huskies, winners over USC today, pay a visit to Notre Dame Stadium at 3.30 Eastern on NBC. Tonight, starting at 8, 7 Central, it's The Office, followed by Community Law and & Order and Law & Order SVU. That's all tonight on NBC. 33-30, the Irish. For Pat Hayden and Alex Flanagan, this is Tom Hammond saying so long from Notre Dame Stadium. Sunday night is football night. The Cowboys and the Giants, tremendous rivalry through the years. One, two, three, four. We get them in the first regular season game that's going to be played at the new palace that Jerry Jones has built in Texas. The New York Giants would like nothing more than to knock off the Cowboys in the first game ever played in that stadium. Let's go!